What's up, Stokers? Before we begin this podcast, I want to let you know that we got a Patreon out, patreon.com slash chat goes deep. We have bonus episodes each week. If you become a patron, classic chat and JT episodes, you're going to love it. It's an extra boost for your tank. Check it out. We also have tour dates coming up. Uh, we're going to be in Texas, Houston, Dallas, June 20th and the 21st, I believe. So make sure that you are, or maybe the 17th. No, we're going to be there the 17th and the 17th and 18th, Houston and Dallas. So get your tickets at chatandjt.com. We're also brought to you by the legends at Titan Investments. What up, dudes? Check out Titan if you want to aim to become the smartest, wealthiest investor you've ever been. Head to titan.com slash go deep to get $50 when you invest with Titan. That's $50 when you go to titan.com slash go deep and invest with titan we're also brought to you by the legends at manscape manscape thank you so much for keeping our trims pew for looking after our hogs for making sure their dinks are looking fresh and clean because guys father's day is around the corner the best gift and i can verify that my dad was very stoked on it when he got it's probably the best gift i ever got him was a lawnmower 4.0 hop on the train because they're gonna love it and make sure that this right here is no dad joke. Treat him and yourself and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GOATDEEP at manscaped.com. Trust me, his dad bod will thank you. Finally, last but not least, we're brought to you by Helix Sleep, guys. Do you want the best sleep of your life? The best mattress you've ever laid on? Check out Helix Sleep. They have a two-minute sleep quiz. Best mattress I've ever slept on. Best sleep of my life. They have over 12,000 five-star reviews, two-minute sleep quiz, plus you have 100 nights to try it out risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash go deep. All right, let's start the show. Wax my ass and stick it in the crock pot. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nations? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chad JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Tomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers. Uh, we are here with the the Tyrion of tongue darts. Oh. I think we short? had tongue dart. <laughs> he's you like know why? There. You know why? Because he's very good at manipulating his way into doing the tongue dart. Oh mm. right! You know, every situation you find yourself in ends with a tongue dart. He's a yes. Lannister. He's yeah. a true yeah. Lannister. Yeah. And I pay my debts. I say, look, if you give me this, I'll dart you later. Right. And I will exactly. always dart. Exactly. Yes, yes. And you fell in love with a hooker who fucked your dad. Yes. Very true. Very true. Yeah. And I also killed my father while he was on the throne taking yeah. a shit. Dude, yes. I, just, I mean, the reference is kind of. Perfect. There are brave women over there. Help me go dart them. <laughs> Let's go dart them. <laughs> <laughs> Who will dart her? I will lead the dart. <laughs> I will lead the dart. Um, uh, and we're here with the 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 composer of ceremonies. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's a new title. But you're good at partying and you're good at having parties and you're good at fostering the, the rage. So I think that works. 100%. Right. Yeah. There we go. We're here with uh, Aaron Callsign Dode. Did we land on that? <laughs> Chad's been did we land on that? All signs at Aaron that Aaron has not been keen on. <laughs> we did not uh, land on yeah, Dode. The text, uh, 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 the text thread has been mixed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Call sign hot take. Hot take's good. Hot we'll, take. Be like, we'll be like, when are we recording the pod? 4, 3.30? Chad's like, Dode. <laughs> Tank tickler. <laughs> well, it's funny because I think Chad Sad is... Tap. Chad genuinely doesn't mean it as an insult. Like, to Chad, it's the highest compliment. True. But you might be the only one who feels that way. But you're like, what if we name you Ash? Picker. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know if that's good. Well, yeah, I'm call sign cum shot. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm on board. Hey, I'm it. on board. Yeah. yeah, call sign gooch. That is sick. Um, it is sick. All right, dudes, we're here for a reason. We're drafting, right? And yeah. we got a real curveball of a draft today. We're doing animals, our top four Let's animals go. on this thing we call Earth. We had to put in some parameters late yep, in the game. Yep. No extinct animals. Now be honest with me, Strider. Whole list gone. 
I'm excited to see how you. I'm excited to see how you. How you bend this one? I, I want to see where you go. I was already hands. looking at it. I was like, is an insect an animal? And it is kingdom. It's like kingdom order class phylum, and it's like kingdom is animalia. Yeah. So right. an insect is an animal. I was like, does that count an arachnid? So that's not bending. No, that's way an within arachnid, the, the yeah. That is way within the the proper taxonomy. Am I gonna get weird and go, ooh, an amoeba or mitochondria, you know, DNA, you like a DNA it. ribosome yeah. cesspool I, that gonna, all life is created from? <laughs> Dude, no, no, I'm no, no, go no, with no, the no. first cell. I'm not doing that. I'm very much gonna be down the middle, sick. I'm gonna try to. Did you guys do some research? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. I crushed fucking documentaries, dude. On animals and shit, dude. I used to watch that shit. So. Yeah, me neither. I didn't do anything. Exactly, bro. It's all in my dome. <laughs> literally, if you look at my phone right now, I just like I literally googled sick animals, you're dude. Like, and then I just saw a lot of sick dogs. Yeah, yeah you're like sad. dog, cat, frog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's get into it then. Should we? Uh... Wait, wait, wait. First, should we talk about the parameters? Like, what are they? Just oh, so no extinct. extinct animals. We want to get like to species. So I think if and I might be using these words incorrectly, but like we don't want to do like. Uh, like you can't just say like big cats or like greater apes or something. Right. Like that. That's yeah. too many. Things. No, like let's get a little more specific. But you don't have to say like a highland, you know, uh, animal versus like a lowland. And I don't even want to mention the animal because I don't want to for right, sure, for uh, sure. tip anyone's pick. But but I, I think we're all kind of on the same page. Like you can't say like, big cats because there's a lot of sick different right. yeah, big yeah, cats. Yeah, you got to be specific. You can't just say shark. You got to pick. Right. right. The yeah. type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And, and then I, look, there's a million like subdivisions within that and we're not coming at it from that right. technical of a perspective but i do think you will if you get hyper specific with your pick i do think that boosts your pick right you know what i mean specificity is always great right and so, you could have a whole shark draft but that's not this draft so we will reward intelligence and and specificity but that is not uh it's not mandatory for each yes pick. okay odds odds or evens or what is that what this mm -hmm, is called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Fourth. Fuck. Thank God. I didn't want that one. <laughs> Odds or evens. One, two, three. Fuck. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. All right. We're going to be sick. I'm Don't on your side of the like that. Not <laughs> you promise? <laughs> I look into the guy's eyes when I play rock, I paper, scissors. All right, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. We've been doing yeah. this for years, so you know the drill. Yeah. Dude, you are so ready. <laughs> I just you, are, <laughs> you are so poised. You are a big cat right now. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, number one pick. You got I the went, number one pick. I went yeah, that's a lot of pressure, rock. dude. Actually, I kind of don't want the number one yeah, pick. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure, animal kingdom dude. on your shoulder. Yeah. But I know what my number one pick is, and I don't think anybody else would have taken a number one, but I'm doing a number one. My number one pick is the killer whale. Nice. nice. All right. That's pretty cool. That's a good pick. Pretty cool. Here's the thing. I need someone tough up top. I need someone to protect the rest of my quartet. Killer whales, orcas, vicious hunters, and they've actually collaborated with humans in hunting. There's a story about a New Zealand pod of wha uh, whales, and I think the guy's name was Old Tommy was the name of the whale. He used to drive other whales into a pod, go alert the humans. They would come in, kill them, and they would divvy up the results. And I think they always gave Good. the tongue to Tom. That's what he was into. Whoa. And then some hunter fucked it up, took Tom's teeth out, and he ended up dying from not being able to eat. Some fucking jackal schmoll always fucks up a good it's thing. Totally. But it's one of the schmoll. few examples of, you know, human animal collaboration on that level. That fires me up. They have language, mm -hmm. they have culture, they have family. Another thing I care about, pop cultural pop cultural impact. Uh blackfish. One of the most affecting documentaries Bro, ever made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all saw it. You came out of that thing feeling pretty fucking bummed. Fuck. And you were pretty fired up that that one whale, Tillicum, made like 50 fucking baby whales. Mm -hmm. What a, a fucking potent mm -hmm. fuck that guy was. And then um, Free Willy. Yeah. yeah. True. Bummer of a movie, but a great ending. But that, I mean, come on, dude. Yeah. Getting the whale to jump. Amazing. And, and yeah, great song out of it. And I, I, I like the human animal. Uh, uh, relation. I like that they're somewhat domesticated, but I like that you can never fully domesticate them. No. Yeah. Like you can put them in the tank, you can have them do the show, but once in a while they might rear up and pin you to the bottom of the pool and murder you. Yeah. And I kind of think I'm like that. So uh, that's a beautiful first pick. Talk about a, the it. demented fuck who saw killer whales, the apex predator of the ocean, by the way, which is sick for you. Uh, be like, we need to put these in pools. 
People yeah. need to see these things jump. <laughs> like, what, where does that come from, I do dude? Respect yeah. it. But it it's is unreal. Sick. Yeah, but it's it like sick. what? Humans are like, how do we dominate this? Thing? Yeah, yeah. Check this shit yeah. out. <laughs> it's because they're so fucking smart. They are very yeah. smart. They're technically dolphins. And they're porpoises. Yeah, dolphins yeah. and whales are technically part of the porpoise. They family. bone for pleasure. Yeah, and they're they're not technically Whoa. whales, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm super psyched to have killer. I think they're beautiful creatures too, just yeah. aesthetically. Love the way they look, and I think they are the king of the ocean. I think they fuck up a. a they great fuck up white. sharks, right? Yeah, so yeah. they flip them backwards. They they put they go swim under them and up. Sharks don't like they can breach and shit, but they they, they never can like do they 360s. Trans, yeah, like whales can. Yeah, well, killer whales kind of play with their prey too. Like you've seen that video of one flipping up a seal like a hundred feet into the air he's <laughs> just fucking around yeah all these all the oh. animals i pick torture other animals yeah. um, <laughs> sadists dude because they're the big bullies on <laughs> campus and yeah. you know I'm, I'm stoked on that pick and i'm stoked on having orcas nice it's, it's yeah. the same draft order oh i think it might be so. yeah interesting yeah. chad and my brother might be inverted yeah i went last i think i went oh, yeah. last top gun style <sighs> all right <clears throat> call sign dude <laughs> uh, first pick my favorite animal the grizzly bear oh, yeah dude right. great pick dude I, I didn't even think about that they're Bro. fucking Bro. huge they're fast they got claws they also got the snout they can swim they can climb they can do it all but they're also adorable yeah mm -hmm. I mean like if, it, if I got caught out looking at one I'm scared but like seeing pictures of them or like they like it's their back on trees you know what i mean like they look cuddly so often but they're also like freaking killing machines and that's yeah. awesome ferocious creatures yeah and they represent our great state california yeah let's go that's the grizzly yeah it's a brown bear i don't know it's a brown bear but a grizzly bear is a brown bear it's just the biggest one. Oh, okay yeah so uh, but i don't know if it's a grizzly but maybe it is huh. but I'd like to imagine that's the reality that we live in. Should be a grizzly. Fuck yeah. Should fucking yeah. fuck yeah. 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 If they Tell don't us. do grizzly, then they fucked up. <laughs> also, good pop culture influence. Smokey? No. no. Oh, the grizzlies? No. no. What are you talking about? The movie, the movie that you always do the quote from. Oh. I'm going to kill the motherfucker. <laughs> the edge, the edge dude. great fucking Tony yeah. Hopkins, Alec Baldwin, baby. Bro, how and did a, I not even get grizzly. That. Wake up. Yeah, what are you yeah, you're on Sudafed, right? I am on Sudafed. Has, I have sinus itis right now. I got it from partying in the desert in Arizona with the boys. And also a good doc, uh, Grizzly, Grizzly Man. Oh yeah, that wacko dude. Sorry, dude, to speak ill of the dead. Spoiler yeah, alert. But uh, he's friends with Grizzlies. He goes up there. He sometimes smacks them in the face when they steal his stuff. And then uh, he made the mistake of bringing a girl up there with him who was on her period. Because the bears killed him because of that. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. He blames it on her. Dude. I, don't, I, I cool. hope that doesn't come across as misogynistic. That's what I read. But uh, I guess, you know, animals, they're aware of that stuff and it, it threw them off and they ended up. Uh, That's nature. Yeah, they yeah. killed them. They hibernate too, which means they get really fat before they take a huge nap, which is awesome. And there's even like. Um, in a national park, they like they'll do a contest where they like track how 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 much these uh, grizzlies pack on, mm. and they do it as like a contest. Like you can like bet on which which grizzly is going to gain the most weight and which one's going to be the 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 uh, king or queen of just like the biggest weight gain before they take fat naps. That's yeah. awesome, and that's great content that I love, and it's just another reason why they're the best. Also, our friend Brandy who dated our friend Wyatt, her mom was twice attacked by grizzlies, survived both attacks. <laughs> really? Whoa. Yeah. Twice attacked? She went camping. Bear came up on her. I've told this story. It's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> she played dead. I guess when a grizzly, you're playing dead with it, It'll it doesn't just walk away. It like yeah. fucks with you a little bit. So yeah. it batted her around. She was okay. Had some cuts and stuff. Lady's a champ. She goes camping again. <laughs> She's out there. Grizzly comes upon her. <laughs> she knows the drill. She plays dead. <laughs> Bear beats yeah. her around a bit. She survived. Jesus, yeah. dude. This ain't my first rodeo. I don't know what to do here. She, the bear just rolled up and she was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Was it the same Grizz? We don't know. But <laughs> hey, What's up, bro? She still camps, which is insane, but very cool. You must love it. Shit. Good pick. And uh, me? Yep. Well, dude, very excited that this is still available. 
I love him. The king of the jungle, the lion. Whoa, nice. big cat. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Can't you go wrong. look like a lion. I love lions. And not, you know, some yeah. might say it's like a pick. Yeah, I'm just picking. No, I love lions. I'm, I'm not just picking lions just to pick lions. I fucking love. Name three of their songs. Three of their songs? <laughs> Circle of Light. Yeah. <laughs> can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? Yeah, I was like, can you feel the love tonight? I can't wait to be I can't. Playing. God. Sorry. Damn I didn't think it. we were going to get it. This is a team effort. Is a team no, effort. no, I slipped in Yeah. No, I slipped Fuck. in Fuck. <laughs> this is boo, my boo, pick. Boo, boo by me. Um, What's the uh, Jeremy Irons one, though? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. When he's Scar. Oh, be prepared. Be be prepared. Okay. He doesn't? Oh, it sounds just like You're saying Donny Osmond or something? Pooh, really? Oh. He matches the voice Jim so Cummings well. Jim Cummings from Winnie the Pooh sang that. Yeah, because I, I was listening to that song. I, dude, I listen to Lion King soundtrack a lot. Mm. It's the best. Circle of Life. Oh, it's amazing. If you're on the treadmill Circle of Life, you're going to finish your sprint. Yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah, the, I mean, Jeremy I just sounds just like him. That's cool. Anyways, uh, what's that? My buddy's father-in-law. Really? Yeah. Seems like a cool dude. Yeah. He's was he cool? Sure. Nice. Okay, moving forward. The king of the jungle. The only one of the only mammals that really lives in squads. They have squads. Um, yeah, I really liked that about him when I was reading about him. Yeah, that they're like collaborative. Yeah, they're collaborative. They work together. Uh, the mane is a sign of dominance. And they're just majestic beasts. They're so they're they make me happy. So, thank you, lions. I love yeah. that, dude. Dean Schneider, who's formerly on the pod, he he just posts videos of him like snuggling with lions. I'm like, that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. If I could do that, that's all I want to do. So. And their claws are retractable, right? Which claws. is like that with a lot of claws uh, are retractable. Big cats, which is pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Also, I have a very funny Dean Schneider story that I was laughing about with you on our road oh, yeah. trip. Dean Schneider, I think he'd only done one podcast before ours. And he meant this innocently, but it's hilarious. He goes, the guy's like, what's interesting about working with lions? He's like, it's all amazing. But, you know, this one guy commented on my video and said it was gay to work with lions. <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes like a huge pause. Amazing. I had no idea where he was going. Then he goes, I don't understand. It's like the least gay thing in the world. <laughs> 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 I don't know where either guy's coming from on that one, but I, I enjoy the argument. <laughs> dude, that's gay. It's the least gay thing you can do. Dude. It's the opposite of gay. Yeah. That's so funny. Strider, who's your pick? All right, number one pick. Oh, you get two. You get two. Exactly. Yep. Back to back. So my first pick, I guess, uh, is going to be the Wolverine. It's a sick-ass animal. It's an underdog. It's ferocious. It can be like a couple feet long and maybe weigh like 60 pounds. It's been known to take down moose. This fucking thing is a beast. The sickest X-Men is named after it. He's our favorite character, so it's got a pop culture check. It's fucking tons of high school mascots. I get it because they're beasts. And they're fucking cool. Their furs are legit. Sadly, they were hunted, you know, the 1800s and shit like that. Uh, it's a solitary animal. So it's literally just built to fucking survive dude and just be tough as nails it's just like basically like every like estranged uncle or something like that that just is like i feel like mountain men base their personas on these things they just fucking go around take out big ass things um they're fucking just industrious little fuckers that are super chill they've got claws um we've all seen i don't want to actually i don't want to reference that video because someone might pick it but um yeah dude just badass undersized underdog animals out there just go, giving it a go, just survivalists. Hell yeah. So fucking pretty fucking sick, dude. I love it. Yeah. Who's up next, brother? Up next, I'm going with, oh, fuck, this is debate. Because then I lose one. I'm going to go with. I know where you're going. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, I do, brother. <laughs> brother, I see it. A T-Rex. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, fuck, dude. Going back to back is tough because I like to think about it and debate and see what happens. But um, we already blew it with Wolverine. So just no, no, Wolverine's on. a sick ass animal, dude. It's a sick ass. Animal. I know how to make Aaron cream, dude. I know what he wants, and I could make Aaron cream right now. Make him cream. Make him cream. That's the name or of the game. Or save the cream. Or save the cream. Play your game. Play your game. <sighs> All right, maybe I'll just make Aaron cream right now. 
I'm going to go with... No, I don't want to do it. Make him oh. cream. Dude, oh, Strider, are you in your head right now? I'm yeah, you're in your head. dome, baby. Fed. The Sudafed is hurting you, dude. You're yeah, playing hurt. Yeah, it, it hasn't kicked in yet. But you're also playing antics. A Wolverine is sick as fuck, dude. It's sick as fuck, dude. It's a good third dude, pick. It's a good third no, pick. No, no, no. Yeah, that's true. No, 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 no. I love your pick and I support it. Thank you, dude. Chad and Lion is a great Chad pick, too, and I support mad. that. Dude. He's trying to win. All right. He's just trying to <laughs> push you into more bad choices. He's I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... A Jaguar, dude. Nice, dude. Nice. nice. And I, but I want. Yeah, good, good. I love the Jaguar, dude. It's got tons of uh, mysticism around, it, especially the black Jaguar. But I'll pick all Jaguars. I don't want to get too genre bendy here. But it's a it's a big cat. You got to have a predator, and it's fucking sick. They're super rare to see. If you see one, it's, you know, can be lucky. From that psychotic Mel Gibson movie Apocalypto, he calls himself Jaguar Paw, which is legit. Um, when I'm nutting. In fact, that's what I say when I nut. I say, I am Jaguar Paw. Um, so I think that's a sick-ass fucking animal, dude. Uh, I've seen them drag caimans out of the water, diving into the water, Amazing. and pulling a caiman, which is a smaller-sized crocodile, out of the water with its jaw. So they're jacked, and they're fucking fast, and they're sleek, and they're magnificent. And you have to have a magnificent animal on your list, I think. That clip, <clears throat> excuse me, has got to be one of the coolest nature doc ones of the Jaguar just yeah. diving, like jumping out and snatching it by the head. Yes. It's so cool. It's so sick. So sick. And they can they can like drag up to like a 500 pound animal up a tree, right? Yeah. To just f and like climb straight up vertically a tree like with its claws. Like pound for pound, they're the strongest of the big cats. They're so sleek. They yeah. just look sexy. And you know yeah. what? I'll say that. It's sexy. It is a sexy It's like animal. a great 147 pound boxer. Right. You know, fast, strong, mm -hmm. fluid. A, a luxurious car is named after it. Jaguar. Trademark. Jaguar. Trademark sort of a, what would you call it? Not a roar, like a meow. Yeah, it's like. Meow. Yeah. Meow. Yeah, they would do that right. at the end of the yeah. commercials. Yeah. Meow. Do you hear, dude, do you hear that in the jungle? Oh, you're going to pop your a boner. Like, <laughs> you're going to get yeah. dominated. Yeah. 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 Not later, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Just come I'm face gonna, yeah, Arguably the sexiest animal. Jaguar. Claw or like Jaguar P Cologne is the reference at an Anchorman, so a pop culture check. Yeah. So yeah, that's a sexy, sexy animal, the Jaguar. Nice, dude. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah. <laughs> Great pick. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. these are solid. Thank Don't you. look at me with those. Thank you. Guys. Yeah. Did Don't you? worry. When your list comes around, I'm gonna hammer your killer whale letter. Don't worry. I'm gonna hammer it. I'm gonna hammer it. You didn't like the killer whale. Just pick? get ready. Oh no, it's a great pick. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> You have to pick it. Now he's got me on skates. You're sneaky, bro. No, this is a, this is full sincerity because I'm being the good guy. I love your picks. Thank you. And I and no, how do you not? That's political. You it's not political. It's People political like because that. I'm creating good karma for myself okay, as a picker. I like that. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And Lion's the king of the jungle. It's a great Maybe. pick. Maybe. Thank you, dude. Seems a little manipulative to karma. It looks it, look, <laughs> it looks like it looks like you know Jamna Bender and I are on. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Chad and I might trade picks, dude, later on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. 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 that could be pretty sick. That. Somebody actually asked me if, we, if, we, if we're allowed to do that. Whoa. I was soliciting some uh, advice for animal picks. Yeah, me too. <laughs> nice. And yeah, they were like, are you allowed to trade? Whoa. That, that would make things really interesting. And very long, too. Oh, yeah. 45 minutes of us trying to work yeah. out a deal. <laughs> Six <laughs> hour <laughs> animal draft pod. Uh, my turn? Do I get two or one? One. Still understand this. Thank thing. you, Aaron. Um, all right, you know, I was gonna go with a predictable one, but it came into my mind later, and I was like, no, I gotta go with my gut. It's something that I actually truly adore. Something that I love. Dolphins. Nice, um, nice. Protector. Beautiful. My, I feel like my protector. Whenever I go out surfing, I see dolphins often. It's the best part of my day. Whenever I see dolphins, I'm like, today's gonna be a good day, dude. I was in the I was in the water like two weeks ago, and they're like dolphins just surrounding me, surfing in the waves. Amazing. They're your buddies out there, and yeah. when there are dolphins out there, you know there aren't any sharks nearby, so it's it's double. And I'm just like, man, if I see dolphins, I'm having a good day. Cute as fuck. They can live up to fifty years. They're in pods. Mm -hmm. What up? <laughs> so are we? You know, <laughs> smart as fuck, cute as fuck. They're your buddies. They got big ass foreheads. 
They might, oh, dude. They try to fuck you. They might yeah. try to fuck you. We, yeah. I think that's a pro, a plus. I th- For I sure, did, yeah, it's a plus, dude. All my, that was very positive the way I said. It. They do try to fuck you, and I'm fired up on it. And Hell I know yeah. call sign Dode is too. Sorry, dude. <laughs> you make call sign cream. You got flipper. <laughs> Sorry, cream, call sign cream, cream is good. Okay. Yeah, cream your shorts. <laughs> uh, he doesn't seem that stoked on it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, I think the Aaron cam was. We'll know. When call sign. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. find it. I'll, that, like? I'll stop with the dough yeah. though. Sorry. They also make that cute sound. You know that they're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a beautiful. Harlan, Harlan Williams does a good impersonation of them. And when they're just riding waves like on a boat, there's so much. Yeah, it looks like they're living for bliss. Don't they feel like you're angels in the water? If you're on the boat and they're with you, you're like, you're like, oh, I've got some angels. We got some protectors. And I feel here. like they're doing that because they're like, this is sick. Yeah. Like they ride waves. They're having for, fun. For just to like, this is fun. They enjoy it's a life. good barrel. They they'll help fun. hurt dolphins. Like if one's hurt in the pod, they'll help get them up to, or her up above the, the water. Yeah. To catch a breath. And we love hanging out on the pod. They hang out in pods. Exactly. Oh, that's dude. That's fucking sick. Exactly. Yeah. So. And good pop culture. And you can, there was a time before the doc, the cove came out about them where like, dude, I petted a dolphin one time I and did the dolphins dolphin thing. Too. Yeah. Dude, you have like a five day just like grace to you after that, where you're just like, the world's a beautiful place yeah. and everything is like so lovely and just connected. So there's something about their, their face. It's, it's I think it's very angelic when you look at it you're, you're just like, and you just smile back. And, and it's flipper, they, dude. Flipper. It's because they have that, like, yeah. they look like they have a smile, which in the dock, they're like, it's like the greatest lie. That yeah. <laughs> you know? a dolphin smile, they're like, yeah. we think they're fine, but they're not. Because yeah, they just look they like they're smiling. The Joker smile. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Chris? Uh, I'm going to go with dogs. No. Huge. Good. Huge. Man's best Good friend. Man. Fucking love dogs. Huge. Got, Got a dog. To. They're chill. They can help you hunt. Or they can just be so tiny that they go in a purse or a little bag they're just maybe i should get more specific but if you guys are cool with me just doing dogs they're the best i don't think i need to even elaborate too much because everyone knows that dogs rule the best yeah that's fucking the best the shit dude yeah do you is there a specific breed that you would like to uh emphasize i guess like probably yellow lab dude nice the you poor know. man's golden because they no, should. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I mean, like, um, <laughs> no, yellow labs are great. Well, we grew up fuck you up for that later. We had a, um, we had a lab growing up. That was guys. just my politics. Was, labs are. Did great. you have a golden? Did you have a golden growing up or something? Always had goldens in my family. What kind of dog? Retriever. What kind of dog do you Golden currently retrievers. have? Little rescue mutt, dude. Yeah, it's the worst it's dog mutt, for sure. <laughs> oh. It's the worst kind of dog to have. Hundred <laughs> percent. Whoa, dude, I uh, I think I'm gonna get fired. Wait, I think I'm gonna get your golden dog is half golden that you have right now, isn't it? No, it's half lab, bro. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, Labradoodle. Whoa. I thought it's it was a golden name. doodle. You're nah, right. it's a Labradoodle. Oh. Me and my wife, we both grew up with labs. Which the They're inventor of the Labradoodle, the one who first uh, cross pollinated those two breeds, said it was the greatest mistake of his life. He called it an abomination. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Why did he do that? Because <laughs> they're so energetic. Yeah. He's like, that's why? Like the 80s. Because they're, they're, like, they're annoying? They're just like, Yeah. But yours is super yeah, well Yeah, I don't think they're yeah. annoying. No, it's a great dog. He, he, he was like, he just came to despise what he created. He was just trying to make a hypoallergenic dog for people. Right. You know, that happens too. Like Noble, when he created Black Powder, uh, the guy who invented the atom bomb regretted it. Um, Oppenheimer, I think the lady who was like responsible for like Roe v. Wade, she ended up flipping the other way and going pro life. Whoa, I, I, Topical. dogs can always <laughs> topical. <laughs> dogs can always win me over. I find uh, like I tend to prefer goldens because I like hot dogs. You know, yeah. like I just like, but you know, small. Your ears a good looking dog too. Thank you. Labs, goldens, those are my preferred. But like small dogs, Classic. I'm all, I've always been kind of like. Small dog comes in, I'm like, whatever, dude. But then they win me over. I'm like, dude, I fuck. If I spend time with them, I'm like, I fucking love this dog. So I think they just have that special ability. Do you know puppy eyes is a genetic tr- survival trait for dogs because yeah. they are oh. okay being fed by humans? So that's literally a survival tactic. Also, oh, look yeah. cute, so they'll get fed. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. That's awesome. I mean, is yeah. there a better dogs are so smart. evolution than that to look cuter, dude? And the fact that you can breed dogs so quickly, like genetically, they're pretty amazing. Like. 
you can like combine two dogs and create a new like this labrador or not the labrador the golden doodle like in a generation it's really impressive so that's why my pick is based off that kind of uh species connection it's the rabbi deer half rabbit half deer no i'm kidding <laughs> That's I love that bending, dude. I wish you would do it. I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's like a trick you do. I used to have one. You get like a taxidermied rabbit and it has horns on it. Oh, People yeah. are like, what is that? And then you go, it's a rabbi deer. In the winter, uh, deers can't tell the difference with a rabbit in the snow and they fuck and it makes a rabbi deer. But it's not real <laughs> as far as I know. But it's a fun trick to play on people. A jackalope, that's the other nickname. Uh, dudes, I, I'm, I'm cocky as shit right now. I think I'm going to take this draft. I got two picks here. I don't think so. I'm going to hammer your killer whale pick. All right, coming up first, I, I had to go with one of the great apes. I didn't know with, which one I was going to go with, but there's a badass vibe to us right now. We're going with the badasses, and I'm going to follow suit. I'm going with the silverback gorilla. Let's go. That's how you make Aaron cream. Uh, mostly. Did what, you cream? No, he doesn't like it. I'm on record with my favorite. Okay. Well, but they're, they're all fun. <laughs> Aaron, they're all fun, though. I don't know. He yeah. seems busy. All right, I'm going with the silverback. I mean. Cream Eats like 35 pounds of food a day, mostly leaves and stuff. Little larva, little bark, little ants. But the diet, you could say they're not fully there is maybe the most badass vegan in the world is the silverback gorilla. Mm. You know, a freaking tank. Just the way they walk around with that posture, that build. When you watch them fight in zoo videos, the way they can leap and move. And uh, yeah, they live in families. They've got 16 distinct calls that they use with one another. 98% genetic brothers with us. And uh, they've made some Respect. fucking fire films. Give them a lot of credit for the Apes franchises. Yeah. And a little oh. underrated one, Congo. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to Silverback. And then next up, and a little dick. Aaron, thank you. That's beautiful. And they have, they're fucking jacked as fuck. They're warriors. And they got little, little cocks. That's huge right there. And they jack off. And they jack off. <laughs> that's beautiful. Dude, what I would they, that's, that's our 98% commonality right that's there. What, yeah. that, that's me. That's it. That's, that's where I'm like, you sure we're not the exact same? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I eat steak. That's about it. Yeah. You think Darwin's looking at the girl's like, and he's like, wait a second. <laughs> Oh fuck, dude! <laughs> like hey, he yeah, walks up, he's like, "Brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> buddy." And he starts jacking off with it, and they're like connecting, like, "Whoa, dude!" And they live a good long life. I think they can live to be up to forty in the wild. I like that. I like a little longevity in my animal. I would yeah. give you anything. Know, I like to, to get to to the wisdom point, which right. there's wiser apes, and I almost went with them, but I had to go with the ape that would beat the other apes' asses. That's right. my. I had to. I, that had to be important to me, and I had the water protector. I needed the land protector. And now I'm going with just the animal that's most near and dear to my heart, the horse. Mm, beautiful. beautiful. And look, beautiful. there's a lot of different ones. There's the beautiful. Clydesdales. There's whatever horses they debate about at the end of Crimson Tide. But for me, it's the it's the, the American West. What is it called? Lippenzander. Fire shit, Chris. Um, I'm going with the quarter horse, the American yeah. quarter horse, yeah. the, the horse of the Wild West, the shaper of the American West. Uh, a quote that Strider put on my radar. There's something about the outside of a horse that's good for the inside of a man. Churchill. And uh, they're just beautiful, majestic creatures. So there's no, I guess there's no, there's only one kind of wild horse. And it's somewhere, I think in like Europe, maybe the Middle East. But we call them wild horses. They're just feral horses, you know. But when you watch feral horses running and they run just because they love to run, it's one of the most life affirming things I've ever seen. And then when you can be simpatico with one and be on board with him, you can feel what it's feeling. Chad, you almost got thrown off one. Yeah. It bucked wild on you, but you held on. I, I should have filmed Bro. it, but I got scared. Dude, yeah, that would have been fire, a fire clip. <laughs> and you were holding a surfboard while you were doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get on it and the thing just, I was like, oh. I was like, oh, this is how you die. Yeah. Because they got that straight ahead vision, but it caught out of its narrow periph, uh, Chad's board. But yeah, they're beautiful animals and, and, you know, I hate to put them in a subservient role, but they're highly functional. They've, they, we wouldn't be here without horses. Yeah. So I'm grateful that you helped us in this, you know, sometimes beautiful, sometimes destructive, but altogether, I think meaningful development that we've had through human history. So thank you, horses. That's an interesting category that I didn't think about is like the man's sort of helping hand. The Beast related. of birds. Horses, dogs. That's, that's huge. They've helped us a ton. But I think Strider, I mean, you got great picks, though. 
What's that? Oh, thank, oh, thank you so much, Chad. Thank you. So, thank you so much for reaffirming. Thank you for reaffirming. JT, that horse pig's very beautiful. Chad, your pig's very, very nice. <laughs> um, no, that's a that's a great. Call. Yeah, I'm that is good. No horses is good, dude. That's sick. I swear to God, that's sick. Dude. And you got War Horse. Oh, you got great oh, pop movies. culture. Secretariat. Lot hearts can't be broken. Fucking. I mean, imagine Legends Secret- of the Fall without horse. Pursuit of Honor. What's that? It's about it, dude. It's like great. It's when um, MacArthur, they're uh, modernizing the military, like in the 30s. They're going to tanks and they're like getting rid of cavalry. They're like it's no longer useful, and to save money, they're like just go kill the horses, just shoot them. And then they're like, no, can't we just like sell them to something? And he's like, no. Like for some reason, he was like, it's easier just to kill these horses. And the guys from the cavalry jack the horses and take them up to Canada. Best horse scene in a movie. I got this mine ready. Horse scene in a movie. This is a great well, question. I'll, well, I just have one in mind that doesn't involve a horse, but one of the best scenes revolving around a horse, Sopranos. Oh yeah, when Tony oh. kills Ralphie. Over yeah, it. yeah, one of the greatest scenes ever. Yeah, or Godfather. Oh, all of a sudden, you you yeah. you made it there. He's like, <laughs> I'm just being like an animal rights activist. We eat beef and pork by the truckload. <laughs> 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 He's a beautiful and it's a creature. Yeah. That was a great scene. My, I was going to say Mask of Zorro. Mm. The chase scene in that one. Oh, yeah. So fun. Very good. Or a good horse chase scene is with the Arnold movie um, through the fucking city. Yeah, True Lies. Lies. That is a great That's one. That's cool. They're on the horse. Multiple you know, floors. Uh, Django's a good one where he goes bareback. That is cool. Yeah. I've yeah. ridden bareback. It's tough, but it does feel pretty special. Yeah. Just holding that mane. Legs Black beauty. Sucking as tight as you can on yeah. top of it. Horses are sexual too. That Daniel Radcliffe play it's a that he did. Sexy animal as it's well. It's not his play, but he was in an Equus where he shows his dick, which was pretty strong. And uh, yeah, it's a sexual animal. It gets people horned up. Horses he shows dick on stage? stage? Yeah. After wow. he did Harry Potter, he's like, you know what? I got to be a real actor. I'm going to show my dick. And me and like six friends in New York went out there and we're like, nice dick. You saw on stage in <laughs> person? I saw Daniel Radcliffe. You dick. saw his dick in person. I know. Wow. I kind of buried the lead. I can't believe I haven't brought this up earlier. But That's yeah, crazy. he stood up there proud with his little dick. Isn't that how what? Yeah, we oh no it was good it was a good size sorry sorry i think I was... that is the high form of art is reciting dialogue memorized dialogue with your penis out it's yeah. a very high art form that's how mm-hmm. acting started that's how it should end mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. beautiful yeah um chris oh fuck i mean every speech braveheart he's on a horse does that count fucking let's go of course i mean almost every movie has, yeah. horses. has horses. horses every great movie the dario greatest, argento the greatest actors in the animal kingdom you could say they do, and they're just beautiful, man. They are. And they're a nice killer. A nice white one, a nice brown one, a nice black one. They're saying this horse that won the Kentucky Derby, the the this true dark horse, might not be able to race in the next one, the Preakness, because it's like training schedule's too close because it was an alternate. I'm oh. like, baby, we got to have that horse go for the Triple Crown. They get hurt, oh. though. So horse I mean, horses live yeah. a good life, and then they break something, and then it's a uh, yeah, later. Yeah. And it's like right now, especially just business-wise, like, don't push that horse. Don't hurt it. Yeah, because that jism's worth so much. Stud fees alone, yeah. Stud Just fees. let it go race the the Belmont Stakes, whatever the last one is. You've had some you'd have some good stud fees. Me? You think so? Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm buttering up to you now. Thank you. Political. You know what? Let me tell you what. And I don't want to come from negativity. The Arab Killer Whale pick was sick. I just got in my head. You got in my head with the Wolverine pick. And I do think Wolverines are sick, dude. I think you guys all have fire picks. I my think next so too. My next one is the crowned eagle. Ooh. Whoa! I want, I wanted Whoa. flight. Yep. And birds of prey are so sick. Yeah. It's friggin' gnarly when birds eat other birds. Uh, this one is total beast. Uh, unusually large talons and strong legs, and may kill by crushing the skull. It's fucking huge. What does it say? Considered Africa's, <clears throat> excuse me, most powerful eagle. And yeah, it's just, I wanted an eagle. It's yeah. freaking huge. It's badass. And yeah, I needed some air power. So that's where I'm going. Yeah, someone had to get aerial. You know, we're, Beautiful. we're, sticking, we're sticking too close to the ground. Mm-hmm. Smart pick. It's a great pick. And what a cool eagle. I hadn't heard of it, but it sounds fucking rad. Yeah, I just looked up uh, 10 most badass birds of prey. Aaron, does it, it look cool? There. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Chad? I got to go reptile. 
first reptile. Ooh, daddy -o. And this one, this one's a beast. King of the snakes, King Cobra. Nice. Beautiful nice. snake. Dude. I think it's the only snake that eats other snakes. No, there's other Gnarly. One. There's other ones? I think the California king snake eats other snakes, right? <laughs> that might be right. Yeah, I think it eats rattlers. Well. Yeah. Anyways, it eats other snakes. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. It's fucking sick. sick. It's the most. It's it the, is the only one. It's the uh, largest, most venomous. It's the largest venomous snake. Um, I think they get up to like eighteen, twenty feet or something. Nice. Crazy, That's so gnarly. But dude, their venom, one bite can kill twenty humans. It can kill an elephant. No, Damn. that's how gnarly they are, and they're the smartest too. They're the smartest of like the like the venomous snakes, like the cobras and stuff. When they and when they when they like square up, they just fucking rise up like that. They're yeah. just like what, dude? And so they flare out, dude. They flare out their lats. They're they fucking, dart. They dart, dude. They dart. Yeah, badass, dude. It's so recognizable. So recognizable, iconic. You, you got Jafar uses the staff with the cobra on it. Yeah, which is iconic. Yeah. Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yep. In the army now, he fights a cobra. Yep. Yeah. You've been watching that like YouTube too, right? Yeah, it's going to be my legend or bay, but there's this YouTube I've been watching, Chandler's, Chandler's Wildlife. It's kind of hard to say for some reason because it's wildlife, not wildlife, wildlife. But he, uh, <clears throat> he has like every venomous kind of, not every, but like some of the most venomous snakes out there. He has king cobras, he has black mambas, rattlesnakes, and all this shit, and he's just take him out he's like i gotta clean the cage today he just yeah. takes out a king cobra and he's like I'm gonna put him in the bucket right now and the thing is just like snapping at him and he's just like woo woo i'm just like watching i'm like holy fuck dude but yeah how so, old is this guy dude he's like 25 it looks like maybe 30 how long is he gonna make it i don't know but he's been dealing with him like his whole life he's yeah he's very confident around them whoa he has rattlesnakes he has he's just he's like yeah this is a green mamba and it's just like slithering up his like hook thing. I'm like, dude. That's but, so gnarly. Yeah, King Cobra. What up? I fucking hate snakes. Do I just have one? Snakes are scary. Just, just one. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm also going Ariel. You took it. This is informed by Chris's pick a little bit, but I'm not upset with what I'm going with. I'm very in my head. But I'll tell you this right now. I'm going with crows. I, dude, I was going to pick them. Crows are the smartest bird. They are debatably the smartest species besides like humans on Earth. Uh, they, they're a cooperative animal. They have a poem. I mean, crows, ravens, there is a slight differentiation there. One, a raven will croak. That's like the poem, Edgar Allan Coe. It's like more uh, daunting and murderous. Like, and then you have like a... Caw. They can be a nuisance, dude. Makes you say nuisance. Crows can be a nuisance. But they're fucking smart. They remember people's faces. Yeah. Through the years. Through the years, years. A group of them has the sickest name. It's called a murder. That's fucking tight that you roll in a murder of fucking crows as opposed to a gaggle of geese. Get out of here, dude. And they're super smart. They can survive. Like they are found like in on every single continent, like super, except Antarctica, of course, but like super fucking survivalist animal, super intelligent. Uh, they work together. You'll see them. Hunting with hawks will be like, and you can just see this in San Juan where we grew up, like a red tail hawk will be hunting. Crows will go out, bite and fight the hawk and then get the prey and then share it. Super fucking sick, dude. Um, so yeah, just a super smart, legit ass animal um, for pop culture. A poem is inspired by one, though technically it's a raven. Um, but yeah, just an elite species. I think that was the the secret winner of the of the bird picks. Um, cause, cause they're different and don't, they understand currency, don't they? Like they collect like trinkets and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they're like, yeah, they'll, they'll remember seeds and shit. Yeah. I did look this up. How does that work? I think it's they like sick. shiny things like, like gold. I'm wrong now, but like gold and silver and things like that. Like they'll collect them and put them in their nest. Like they understand the kind of abstract value of objects. Yeah, I did. I, I forget the research cause we did an episode of history is dank on this, but like yeah, there is some, they did like some test like that where they tested a crow to get like treats and this and other animals can do this, but it's amazing that the bird could do it. Um, like they have the intelligence of like a six year old or something like that, where like it recognized if it brought back, they can teach them to recycle. That was it. They picked up cigarette buds. So crows like literally help the environment. They go around, pick up cigarette buds and get rid of microplastics because they then come back and like get rewards for it. 
which is pretty gnarly. Grady said at the gym today that they have the most comparable brain to body mass ratio to humans. Let's go, dude. So they're fucking elite, dude. And they're an omen. And they're, yeah, and they're an omen, but not necessarily bad. If a crow shows up in your dream, it just means change. Sometimes, you know, change is a difficult process. So we, you know, old dudes fear change, but like uh, it, it do, it's not always negative. And yeah, that's something too. Throughout the history, mysticism and everything, like an eagle, mystical animal, killer whale, like, yeah, for sure. They find old, you know, the tribes of the north, so snakes for sure. So I like that there's fucking mysticism involved Dude, in that. Culver, Auspices. Culver City is crows everywhere. Yeah. Do you know in San Juan Capistrano, it's legal to kill 17 crows in a day? It's, I looked that up. It's a city ordinance. I did know that. It's pretty <laughs> gnarly. Yeah. I pushed it. I've I've killed a crow. It's bad. The the native. You've American killed a crow. Son, yeah. You've killed I, your animal. I sniped one back in the day when I was a kid. I was an idiot. I was the a young BB moron. Rifle? Thought it, yeah. I thought it was cool. Gavin Logan's house, and uh, he's like, my dad hates crows. I was like, let's take out crows. It was fucking stupid. I feel bad. Was it about flying it. or was it chilling? It's fucking just chilling on a branch. What was the range on the shot? It was like a straight up shot, probably high up in the tree, maybe forty feet. It's like a big. That's bad, oak. dude. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I shot a kid one time. Man. You shot a kid? I was also a kid. And my brother. BB after, gun? Yeah, and he was on the run. And after I hit him, my brother said, Good shot. It was. It was like it's a, hey, he was there was like target. a tree. There was there was a lot of obstructions and it was the very basic BB gun, you know, like the very classic the Daisy. One. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lever action. Not the most accurate BB gun on the market. And pff, ow. <laughs> and it was a dude. Chat. He got hospitalized. I was calm. Until he got hospitalized. And then I think my parents set up some theater to make me think I was going to jail, which was smart. Taught me a lesson. Yeah. Sorry I did that, man. Sometimes you go, yeah. I'm also sorry I killed that crow. Don't kill living creatures, you know? Unless they're threatening you, I guess, if a cobra's in your bed. Or if you're you hunter, eat them, you know? In your culture. Yeah. And yeah, you know, sometimes, exactly. And like there is hunting season and, and stuff And there's like respect that. for the there's animal. Some, yeah. Sust sustainability. Uh, do I get my last pick now as well? Okay. My last pick is going to be the sperm whale dude the sperm whale is by far the sickest whale you ever heard of moby dick that's a sperm whale a sperm whale does x-men shit it can it has a very advanced language it has such a powerful echolocation click that if it does it close to you and it will recognize you it knows people and can recognize threats and it takes out boats it can burst your organs just by clicking its fucking making that click it can noise. Burst your organs? Can literally make you rupture from the inside. Is it so loud? Yeah. It can create such a powerful wavelength and boom with it. It can rupture your organs. It can rupture fish's organs. It's a defense mechanism. Crazy. Moby Dick's about it. <laughs> movie with fucking Hemsworth, Essex did, Ron uh Howard movie. It's all about like them this whale. In the heart of the sea. Yeah, yeah. And uh Yeah, very bad accents. Bad Not accents. a great movie. But the fucking whale is gnarly. I think Chris Hemsworth, every movie he's in has the worst accents if they don't let him do him. So true. That Philly Thor accent, works. That Philly accent. That, that's true. He's good as, as Thor. But that Philly accent he did in Black Hat. Is that where he's supposed to be from in that movie? I think he's supposed to be from Philly. Also Jim hilarious. Carter. He's a hacker and you're like, you're a 6'4 jacked linebacker, dude. You're not a hacker, dude. But maybe they are. I shouldn't stereotype. Um, anyway, back to these fucking sick ass sperm whales. And besides me loving dicks and talking about jizz which I do get fired up. And the reason they're called sperm whales is because like the oil and stuff in them, why, why people would whale them just looks kind of like jizz. It's how they got their name. So some dude wasn't super creative with that. Um, it's inspired great art, Herman Melville, um, not great art, Essex. Uh, also a fun note from that movie, like there was a schmoll on that to true journey. Some guy like burnt down the Galapagos islands on that. So like then the fuck, then anyway, the ship gets smashed by this whale. It literally recognizes boats, leaves the pod, goes out, defends it, rams it, fucks up humans i like nature that can fuck up humans a little bit because we need to get put in our place a little bit because we fuck up nature so bad um that we need something that can take it back a male sperm whale is called a bull that's fucking sick it's a bull of the ocean bro also speaking to diet this is a proper whale it eats bailey it just fucking takes in micro protein dude cleans the ocean while just getting this fact that these massive things clean the ocean and take in small little diets you think it would be something big so it's a very efficient animal the sperm whale but it's just housing krill krill plankton that type of shit yeah with its baleen its teeth which is also why people would get it to that or uh valuable to hunt but anyway fucking sick nice dude love the passion yeah. 
Um, I'm having trouble with this last one because there's one that I'm passionate about, but I have personal experience with, so I don't know if it'll translate. But do I just go with my heart or do I go with what I think? Go with your heart. Go with what makes don't Aaron tell me what cream. To do. Go with what makes you Aaron cream his shorts. I didn't ask. You did. You said, "Should I go with my heart?" I was talking to myself. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. All right, yeah, yeah, all right. We're getting. Some got a bad list. <laughs> no, you got a good. A hey, list. you've got, got a good list. list. Got I think a list. I'm a bad list. I'm just talking shit to you. Where are we right He's now? He's being an asshole. JT's feeling I'm worried being about spicy. his list. No, I really want to get my pick. Baby, you got this. Now I want to take. You've got a good list. No, everybody's got a shit list. Mine's kicking ass. That's what I'm talking about. I just want to spite this fucker. Dude, yeah, now it's, yeah, exactly. But like, go <laughs> with your heart. There's a little spice. You asked. No, I was asking myself. All right, well. All right. You got a sexy ass list, baby. All right. But shut up. If I give any advice, I'd say make Aaron cream his shorts. Because he hasn't creamed yet. All right, I'm going to go with the rhino. Shorts. Nice. I'm going with the rhino. I love that. It's the power lifter of the animal kingdom. Got big ass thighs, big ass horn. It's majestic, uh, ivory made of ivory. Um, what else? <laughs> it's, got know, great just it's got a great scene from uh, Ace Ventura Two. <laughs> it's the best scene of yeah. all time yeah. it's, with him coming out of there. It's so funny. Kind of hot in these rhinos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say there's a theory that unicorns are based off of rhino because there used to be like an old bones found of like a rhino that just had one super long horn yeah so perhaps the uh origin of the unicorn myth yeah comes from a rhino that's tight rhino and huge cocks oh do they, right. really? do they huge, do cocks. huge cocks rhino cocks huge and they shit like volleyballs like big old that's fucking what... things yeah you said that yeah yeah you told me that it was like three in a row it's <laughs> right out it was awesome it was like it was one of the coolest things. It was at least going to be an honorable mention for me. And I just want to shoulder charge one so bad just to feel that, like, mass and See, weight. See, toe-to-toe? No, I assume it'll, it'll, it would wreck me, but it would just be fun to feel running into, like, a animal wall like that. Oof. And I'm curious what the texture of their skin feels like because I can't tell how hard or soft it would be. Sorry. What's I would pick? like to touch one. Oh, I'm up. I think I'm going to go with the platypus. Nice. Cool. It's just a very interesting animal. It's also known as a duck-billed platypus because it has a duck beak, but it's a mammal that's mostly aquatic, but it's one of the few animals that lays eggs. It's one of the few mammals that is venomous. Whoa, Whoa. I didn't know it's that. Venomous? Yeah. It's got a, I think it's got a stinger, I believe. Whoa. Um, so, oh, yeah, it's tail? just a lot of... It's got a lot of it's just got a lot of shit going on. They're kind of weird looking. <laughs> Dude, they're super sick. Don't they live in like Australia or something? That's tight. Uh yeah, Australia, Tasmania. Fuck I yeah. think. Um and yeah, it's like it's an animal on to there's nothing else like it. It's a platypus is like it's the only one of those that's around. It's very unique. Um and I've I've always just loved them. They're just really they're just really cool and different. And they got little duck feet. It's fun. 100%. It's one of those animals that makes me believe in aliens. It's like, that's on our planet? Come on, baby. There's other stuff going on. What do you got? For my last pick, I'm going with a a mammal. So all mine are mammals, which is kind of a weakness. And it's a, it's a primate. It's an apex predator. They can be so many different things. They can be kind, cruel, manipulative. Oh, here we go. Competitive. They're capable of abstract thought and the development of ideas that they can pass on through generations. They can come up with ideas like a draft and then do that with their friends and then debate and argue and and fight. And they can do things beyond that, too. And for my money, the hottest of the animals, except for maybe the jaguar. (laughs) But I, I do find myself frequently aroused by them on both sides. I'm going with human beings. Wow. Fucking what a bend. A it's nice a bend. bend. Mm-hmm. Primate. It's yeah. An animal. This is fucking very true. And, you know, I think we have a very specific purpose in the universe. We are the universe contemplating itself. And other animals can do that to a, a smaller degree, but they can't write books about it as far as we can tell or make movies or do podcasts. So I'm going with humans as my fourth pick in my bend. Very nice. The picks are in. Yeah. 
What do we got? I don't know if there's any clear shot winner where we're like, that fucking list rips this time or... I was, Should we recap it? Yeah, I don't because yeah. I don't remember what everyone. I started and then running. Them maybe down, kick but. the. Uh, yeah. Well, Aaron, do you want a second? Oh, Aaron, do you want to recap them? You got it. You know them, right? Yeah. Believe. Alrighty, so JT's picks: number one, killer whale; two, silverback gorilla; three, horse; four, human. <laughs> Chris, number one, grizzly bear. Two, dogs. Three, crowned eagle. Four, platypus. Chad, one, lions. Two, dolphins. Three, king cobra. Four, rhinos. Strider, the bender. Wolverine, number one. Jaguar, number two. Three, crows. Four, sperm whale. I think Strider has the worst list for sure. <laughs> we want to do honorable mentions. Uh, we do a pig. I thought none of us talked about animals that we eat because yeah. I guess we were thinking about the animal more in its own life. But pigs and cows, like the contribution has been gigantic. Oh. And then pigs are Steaks. intelligent. Yeah, they're clean. Like people say, filthy like a pig, but that's only because they go in uh, mud to cool down. They're actually very clean animals, mm-hmm. and they don't sweat. No sweat gland. They make bacon. Them. And they make bacon. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to choose the animal for like what its own living. I thought about that for a part. I was like, cows, steaks, fucking good. But I I, I was going to go with otters because I love otters. Oh, yeah. 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 There's otters everywhere. Dude, they're the most playful animals. They hold hands while they sleep. I'd see them. In, I'd see them in Santa Cruz and they'd be like on their backs with like a rock on their belly and they'd take like a, you know, like a, a muscle or something and be like smash it. crack, smashing it open. I saw one just on its back, just ripping apart a crab and eating it. It was the coolest mm-hmm. thing. Ever. And they're so cute. Yeah. They just look up at you and you're like, hey. There's also like giant squid or an octopus, like mollusks and yeah. shit. I was going to say cuttlefish or like octopus because of the way that they change colors. It's probably some of the best baked planet earth thing you could do. Mm-hmm. Is Are those episodes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Octopus dream too. They have dreams. That's I mean, they're awesome. like the smartest... They're super fucking smart. They're like yeah, aliens. Right. Yeah. Jellyfish. Yeah. I think jellyfish, can jellyfish live forever? I think they're immortal, yeah. Well, I think they're the aliens. Are immortal. What? Lobsters are immortal, I think. I think they just are they live really? a long time. Not when I meet them. Well, yeah. 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 Put them in a pot, <laughs> baby. Evolve, but yeah, I think they would otherwise be. One of the coolest ones I read about was this thing called the bombardier beetle, which shoots basically shoots acid out of its butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is because I, yeah. I was googling. I I because I was looking for traits, and I was like, best defensive animals. Yeah, and that was the coolest one on that list. Wow. Although I did read about some ants that'll like basically like burst their abdomen and like have like their acid blood like squirt onto their enemies to kill them. And yeah, sacrifice none of us went with bugs, and I guess it's because of lack of relatability. Like I've never had a relationship to a bug. You can't really look in their yeah. eyes. Yeah, they don't. They don't blink. Praying mantis they, would have been the one, or a bombardier oh, beetle. If they it's blink. hard to respect them. A black widow, poisonous. Black widow, I respect those. Yeah. Daddy long legs, sick name. Can that beetle? That beetle can push twenty times its weight when it pushes dung. Dung beetle. That oh, sounds right. Dung beetle? Yeah. yeah. Strong. Ants can lift like, like 10 times their body weight. Mm-hmm. Very strong creatures. And the dung beetle, they do, they like turn poop into balls and that's where they put their eggs. And that's it, the male and the female just rolling up a ball, wow. which is pretty. Think about this, bro, that I was trying to bend it. Coral, dude. Oh, oh that would have been good. Coral. It's a living creature. Yeah. It's huge for the ocean. It's it's mass. It's a huge one. All right, Aaron, what Cheetahs. do you think? Cheetahs. <laughs> Cheetahs are sweet. Pure cheetahs. Uh, I was also <laughs> going to say uh, beavers. They're the oh, yeah, they second dams. to humans affect the the world uh, the most. They affect Whoa. the environment. Whoa. Whoa. Because beavers, yeah, they cut down trees and shit. Build dams and Build shit. Build dams, yeah. Uh, raccoons are a personal favorite of mine. Yep. My favorite great ape. Nobody mentioned it. The orangutan. Orangutan. Was, I, maybe I should have gone with that. It's fine. But then I got humans. You should, you should watch uh, Orangutan Jungle School. If you haven't, I need to. Very cute. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Largest tree dwelling animal, the orangutan. They mm-hmm. like that perspective. They like to see things from above. Mm-hmm. They're pretty solitary. Uh, the narwhal. Yeah, Amazing cool, looking creature. Cool. Right? Very alien. It's got a spear on its head. It's, it's overgrown tooth. Technically a tooth. 
The shoe bill is the craziest fucking bird you'll ever see in your life. Google it. Looking it up. Shoe bill. They're massive. They're that's proof that dinosaurs are birds. Shoe bill. Oh yeah. There I got it. Yeah. They're Whoa. Insane. Yeah. Oh, but, elephants. Uh, Elephants, elephants rule. They get sad when they um, lose someone they love. I get sad when I see elephants sad. And then I was going to say the sea otter. Hippos. Hippos. Saltwater crocodile. Cute and deadly. The yeah, the deadliest, oh, right? Uh, yeah. uh, the deadliest in Africa. Wolves. Wolves. Oh. Kangaroos. Kangaroos. They get great. jacked up top. Yeah. They use oh, their tails. Yeah. Well. Marsupials, too. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are sharks one of the oldest? Yeah, they yeah, haven't evolved. Crocodiles and sharks. They're, sharks are 400 million years old. I don't know what's Yeah, Yeah, so they've been... Does have just been swimming. How you see them now is how they've always been. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Penguins. The males Penguins take cool. care of the egg. That's nice. Little yeah. Kramer versus Kramer situation. Keep there. each other warm. Dude in charge. That's very funny. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's get to my picks. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, gang. Coming in fourth, it's got, it's got to be Strider. <laughs> Look, that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I just think, I've got a sick list. There are so many sick animals out there for your number one. Wolverine's cool. <laughs> it's gonna be out there for a while. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about wolverines before. Yeah, but it's a sick ass animal. That's but why. I thought you go honey badger maybe because they're like. I was gonna. I debated going honey badger. I debated with the video. It's cool, but I think wolverines are more sick than honey badgers because they have X Men. It's what I like that X Men. You like after the culture, yeah. The cultural impact. I mean, we the sick ass animal. We hung out a little bit earlier on his pod, and I was like, you know, dog has got to be a number one pick. Yeah, but it, I couldn't do it out of honor. I couldn't do it out of honor. I'm okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in third place. Some great picks. But when he came to bending, got a little too cute. No way. JT Parker. There's no way. <laughs> I got to agree. Great top three. Four. <laughs> you like the human pick? Too cute. Okay, Too fair cute enough. for me. But we wouldn't even have drafts if it wasn't for humans. Does that not make sense? <laughs> drafts. Oh, did you say giraffes or drafts? Drafts. drafts. <laughs> I said like giraffes. I was like, what? That's why I was like, what? <laughs> we could kill them all. Do you understand? Like, you know about giraffes? <laughs> We've let them live. <laughs> As the fourth pick, though. I, I, I don't like that, Ben. Man, I should have gone with the peregrine falcon. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. I needed a bird. Wolverine was definitely the Sean Penn pick of the. Yeah, of the that, was, for sure. that was insane. Definitely don't agree, dude. Definitely don't agree. I stand by my list, dude. Thank you. I mean, when you when he went to detail on sperm whales, I was like, oh, those are impressive, but just sperm whale. Sick sperm whales are sick. I thought you were gonna say human. No, 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 no. I thought about bending it, but you know, I didn't want to come in fifth. <laughs> 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 All right, top two. Oh, Chad, lion, dolphins, king cobra, rhino, classics, classics, and I love them all. I love a rhino. I too want to feel what one feels like, Chris. Yeah. And they're big as fuck. You stand, they're as tall on their fours as they, as you are standing. It's crazy. Whoa. And did monster dumps. Monster dumps. <clears throat> Respect it. And prehensile lips. They can do this oh, yeah. with their mouth. Whoa. But I think... I think the person who bent the best is Chris Parr on this one. Get on that mic. Three and four. Let's three and four. Go. Left field, but chef's kiss. So what was his... I forget his four. Grizzly bear. Dogs. As a two, I mean, could have been a one. Grizzly bear is classic, though. And it is the California State Bear. Oh, nice. Uh, so it is on the flag. Um, Let's go. Crowned Eagle. I mean, those claws were fucking insane. That's a fun, like, who even thinks of that? And then the platypus. That's the perfect bend right there. Mm. Platypus. Unique. So Chris, Chad, <laughs> JT. Good, good job, job guys. good job hey great job guys i yeah. told you you guys good draft sucked. good draft <laughs> <laughs> Fuck right. that yeah, was sick. Dude. That was sick. i think we actually have time for cues this time 
you know, I won the first one and then I uh, had it one since. So this feels pretty good. I love that. What's up, dudes? I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by we got a new Patreon out bonus episodes each week. Classic Chat and, J- Chat and JT. Super fun. Super just an extra stoke boost for your tank. Yeah, I got those words correct. Patreon.com slash chat goes deep. You won't miss out. Also, we have tour dates coming up. We're going to be at Houston and Dallas June uh, 17th and 18th. So go to chatjd.com for tickets if you're in the area. And we have more dates coming out soon. Keep your eyes peeled. We also brought to you by the legends at Titan Investment or Titan Investments. What up, dudes? Um, guys, as you know, I love finance. I love money. I love numbers, and I love playing the market. Thing is, though, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm investing in. I don't know what to invest in. I don't know how to do it. I don't know all that kind of stuff. You know, Warren Buffet can only teach me so much. Boom, here comes Titan Investments. They're coming in as your wealth investment gurus, all right? If you want to make smart decisions when you enter the market, if you're looking for crypto, just regular blue chip, pink chip, all kinds of stocks, uh, and just all kinds of investments, check out Titan Investments. They got guys on there that will help you make smart investments so that you can increase your wealth and not succumb to uh, not having wealth, which blows. Um, so growing your wealth, long-term wealth isn't something you can just DIY and you shouldn't just shit back, sit back sorry, <laughs> and shoot for average returns. With Titan, you have a personal investment team that researches and invests for you so that you can aim to outperform the market while giving you a courtside seat to become a smarter investor along the way. And all it takes is $100 to get started. So, Titan aims to grow your investments at least 15% annually net of fees, which could mean doubling your wealth every five years. Boom. Love that. So, I use Titan. I use it for crypto. I'm going to use it for more stuff soon. I love them. Check them out. Check out Titan if you want to aim to become the smartest, wealthiest investor you've ever been. Head to titan.com slash go deep to get $50 when you invest with Titan. You must go to this URL or you will not get that $50 and they won't know that we sent you. Make sure they know. That's $50 when you go to titan.com slash go deep and invest with Titan. This is a sponsored podcast ad. I'm a client of Titan and invested in the crypto portfolio. What up? Finally. No, not finally. Next up, we got Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pew, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dinks are looking fresh and clean because Father's Day is coming up, guys. You want to make sure that your dad has fire pubes. Just because he might have some age on him doesn't mean he doesn't have pubes and he needs to look after them. And you want him to look after his pubes with the most modern, sleek design pube trimmer on the market, the Lombar 4.0. It is the best on the market. It won't nick or cut your balls. Uh, you get a LED light on them. It's just like a spotlight on your dink. They got the ear and nose hair trimmer, the weed whacker. They got crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner. Look at this thing. It's the best. I did my nose hair the other day. I love Manscaped. Get the Performance Package 4.0. Up your game when it comes to hygiene and, and balls. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code GODEEP. Shake what your mama gave you. <laughs> nah. Shake what your daddy gave you. And that's what's up. All right, players. Finally, we are at Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep, they have the best mattresses on the, mar- on the market. And I'm not just saying that. I was hesitant to use the mattress that they sent me. I got a firm but kind of soft mattress. I took their two minute sleep quiz to match me to this mattress. And I was like, but I like my mattress I have right now. But then I tried it out. It's the best sleep of my life. No joke. Best mattress ever. Guys, if you really want to level up your sleep game, check out Helix two minute sleep quiz. They have soft, medium, firm mattress is great for cooling. If you sleep hot mattress is great for spinal alignment, all that good stuff. All you have to do is take that, Two minute quiz, you order the mattress you match to and the mattress comes right to your door. You don't have to tie it to the roof of your car. And they were awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. 
Guys, don't miss out on these dudes. Go to helixsleep.com slash go deep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash go deep. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash go deep. All right, back to the show. All right, so we had a question come in a couple weeks ago where there was a virgin in the crew, which everyone was supportive of, but I guess he was kind of being hard on the other guys for their sexual activity and it was rubbing them wrong. So we gave them myriad advice and one of the suggestions was to call him out. And this is the follow-up. What up, Chad, JT, and any other dank ass? This is a follow-up about the Virgin Schmoll I wrote in about a few weeks ago. Fire news, the boys and I took your advice and referred to him as Virgin, which, of course, that was the advice they were going to take, mm-hmm. which oh, motivated nice. him to get in the sack with a nice lady, finally getting some puss. That's not the worst outcome. Yeah, yeah. not bad. That's great. It's okay if you would have stayed a virgin, too, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. I hope you guys... You got to let one lady down. It's okay. But we've come across another conundrum. <laughs> in the events following his boning, we found out he has a massive hog. We're talking eight inches plus, lots of girth and lots of stoke. But his cock is apparently so big, no brand name condom sees to sheath his piece. So we met this kid too. Uh-huh. He didn't mention he had a huge dick, but he was nice. We met him in Royal Oak. Nice. Yeah. Or in Grand Rapids. Where was it? Grand he? Royal Oak. You yeah. got to lead with Maybe that, he, buddy. the town's named after his dick. Yeah, yeah but he's dick. Yeah, he's, yeah. it's got to be you can lead with that. the first or second thing and, uh, that comes He's out giving of girls mouth. Grand Rapids is what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking eight inches plus, lots of girth, lots of stoke. So he's just been raw dogging chicks with lots of lube and coconut oil. My dog, how do we... <laughs> Multiple chicks? Yeah, this guy went from... Yeah, like, this is a little BS, here, but I'm going to roll with it. I like, I like, I like all of it. Uh, my dogs, how do we fit this hog into some rubbers? How can we make sure our dog can fuck but do so safely? And at what point do we need to get our hands on and try to fit a rubber on the beast ourselves? By the way, we got him hooked on the pod and we even caught your show in Royal Oak. Now, I remember you guys were awesome. Man. It was really nice to meet you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, pin your friend down, jack him off, have him pop a boner, and then just try on condoms, dude. Should I call Joe? Yeah, yeah. yeah Joe's got a big old dick. Yeah, no one's got a bigger dick than Joe, and Joe finds rubbers. Joe might be at a show right now. He's, there's a show at the Vulcan tonight with Linochi that uh, Joe's on. Dude, literally every show, the crowd asks, how big is Joe's dick? <laughs> oh, every single one. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. And it's mythological. None of us know. Hey, how, yeah, how big true. is Joe's dick? But we have heard from people that it's large, from people who have been intimate with him. Oh, there's no question that there's truth. And we get specific intel on what shape it is. Yeah, but do we need you? This kid wrote in about his friend who's got too big of a dick for condoms. What do you do when you need a condom? Are you on the podcast? Yeah. What do you do when you need what? A condom for a huge dick. Uh, you go to the store, get one. They have them now. <laughs> what brand? They big dicks. And they, people, and they figure it out. <laughs> Street. What are, I think you're a big part of that. What are they called? Magnum XLs. And those can fit like a big eight incher that's super thick. Yeah, yeah, it'll fit. <laughs> Take it easy. It's gonna fit. <laughs> but I gotta go. Yeah, have a good set, man. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, thanks a lot. All right, later, brother. Bye. Later. Later. There you have your answer. Yep. Sup, bros. If you could go back to any point in time at any place event you'd want, when and where would you want to go and why? I think I'd drop back and chill the Egyptians because it seemed like these, those guys knew how to party. Your safety is guaranteed and you're not there to make any crazy changed like stop historical events. Just vibe and enjoy it. I think a great one would be to go to the um, Circus Maximus in Rome, which is mm. where they do chariot racing. Yeah. Which is basically you can get fucked up with your boys off of wine. And go watch gnar- people get fucking gnarly and race some horses. You most popular spot, spot to sit was like the turn, of course. Most accidents and whatever. And it's barbaric, but you're Roman. You're Roman at this point. There's the Colosseum. People are killing each other. That's mode decorum. So I think that would be sick to go back to a cultural event like that. And I know my eats are going to be good. It's basically, you know, Italian food. You know, they're not eating pasta, but I'm going to have some good grapes, some good wines. It's probably some fucking dates or something like that. And it's going to be sick as hell. I think I'd go ancient Greece. You got philosophize. Yeah. Um, togas. 
cool thing. I don't know. Spartans. I don't know if I'd want to be a Spartan, but it'd be cool to just witness the Spartans in action. Do like a yeah. CrossFit workout with them. Dude, yeah, yeah. And they're just combing their hair and they're just getting ready for battle. Um, yeah, for some reason, Rome, ancient Rome is cool, but for some reason, I just, I, I romanticize ancient Greece a little bit more. I think it informs, sounds sick. Yeah, it informs Roman culture. Mythology yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Roaring 20s? Roaring 20s? I think um, I'm going to go... Studio 54. Oh, Whoa, great good pick. call. This is, like, um, this is a good move. Uh, so you can party with mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd want to be able to get in like the exclusive room where they're doing like, probably doing quaaludes and like just all those drugs. I know that the food's going to be good, mm-hmm. you know, because like, dancing's going to be good. The dancing's going to be super fun. Um, and I'll just get to wear really flashy outfits. I think it'd be, I think it'd be a good time. And I wouldn't stick out in any way. I, I feel like I could blend. And just have a really good time. Yep. Hell yeah, dude. That was a fire pick. That was a good ass call. Would they know for having good food? Well, just because like I could just like get like a steak or something. Because you're oh, in New York City, I mean? right? Oh, yeah. Right. Like I'm just in New York. You know. Yeah, exactly. Dude, that would be cool. Get a Caesar. You know, just freaking <laughs> hang. <laughs> oh, that's a great ass call. Get a Caesar call. with Rick James. <laughs> yeah. What if whoever's there? You know. Maybe the summer of Sam, New York. <laughs> right. I think there was a. Uh, I think the the trash men went on. Uh, strike so it smelled like shit in the city yeah just worse than one ever. of the hottest cities in recorded new york history there's a crazed maniac on the loose murdering people <laughs> right there's a blackout and the yankees are on fire reggie jackson <laughs> is cracking fingers, dude. that would have been cool it would be cool to be there for like the worst moment in history for a specific city yeah. and I, honestly i think we kind of lived through that with la bro uh, it was bleak here for a while man. La- like two years ago oh yeah it, it, it felt covid um, the protests, yeah, um, right. You know, you got National Guard on the street, 4 p.m. curfews. You're like, yeah, this is probably as this intense as it's gonna get. That was crazy seeing like dudes with assault rifles just like at a major intersection, like down the street. Yeah, you walk to get coffee, and you're just like, I'm just like saying, what up? It's only for a little bit, but still, yeah, interesting. Bad. No kid. To witness that. Bad. No, yeah, no, no, no. it's not not horrible. Yeah. yeah, still just just different mm-hmm. in yeah. a kind of an eerie way, but not threatening. Yeah, I uh, wasn't aware of it. I was just playing Call of Duty. People are like, do you know there's riots going on? I'm like, oh, for real, dude. Call of <laughs> Duty is I have a full blown addiction, but truly, got to shout out to you guys for hooking it up with the Xbox. Literally saved my life, dude. Doing that and having the boys on comms, and the fact that we're still doing it. Like last night, you hopped on comms. You were the fifth man, which is painful. Our boy Greg kept saying one more and then kept doing one more. No, Classic. Yeah, that's the way it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah. And and he's a good player and we needed him. Better than me too. Beautiful. He's, dude. He's, and he, 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 he's we might have saved your life, but you saved a lot of lives out there, dude. Legends, bro. You've been revving, dudes. Um, hey, Damn boys. straight I did. Hey, boys, straight up. I'm ass at beer pong. My throw is inaccurate and inconsistent. How can I fix this? Big kiss. Love you. Ark, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's the follow through. And just get a lot of shots up. Mm-hmm. Use your legs a little bit. A little bend in your leg helps. You know, don't like really, you know, cricket throw it. <laughs> and when you have follow through, like your Jordan, and you yeah. aim at the cup, you know, flick the wrist, aim at the cup, almost every time. I'm yeah. all early in the round, dude. I'm all about the sky ball. There's yeah. so many cups, dude. Just get that thing up. You might drop in, mm-hmm. you know? And then, yeah, just repetition it sucks i used to be so good but i just don't get shots up yeah it's like anything it's practice makes perfect and you know a nice little buzz might help you a little bit cool buzz uh do little do little shenanigans with your partner where you switch balls or like who's going first switching sides just always be looking for even if it's like a <clears throat> the superstitious way to like you know get some juices flowing you know find out what works massive and this is huge, huge bear pong playing tip I'm about to give out right now on the pod. Um, this is a defensive tip for you. You have to play with your other team's optics. So stand up close to the cups, like at the edge of the table. And then when they're about to shoot or a little bit after it, move away and be constantly changing where you are because the brain is relating to everything around. So you can fuck with the guy um, a little bit, just basically like get, not giving them a backboard. Right. Do people practice at home alone? They I should. I did. Yeah, I did in college. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I'd be. I would. Be, I have a desk in my room, and I'd be in the bed, and just sort of like just throwing it up there and just letting it hit. Nice. And I'd have a whole stack of b pong balls right here in a bucket. 
Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Every night. Oh, 100 percent. I'd go through them all, and then in the morning, first thing I did, drop down 20 push-ups, pick up the balls, nice. then jack off and start my day. Smart. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and that's the right order. <clears throat> find the songs that you ball out to. You know, put those on when you need a boost. Yeah, what was yours? Gives you hell. That was a good one. Okay. That was a. I mean, it would change with like depending on the summer. You know what I mean? You find it's like your songs of summer where, and then you're like, oh, I'm just dominating that song, but gotta put it on again tonight. Bro, when we would cruise over to your room, JT, or Chris, your room where we'd always hang out. Technically my room. Technically too. JT's room though. JT space, JT's office, your room. And uh, <laughs> we'd cruise in there and JT would be like, bros, got a new fire song. Hit it on the computer like Kazaa or whatever. Hit that shit. Like Kevin Little would come on. Turn and me on. Like, That's what I was thinking. This is it. Dude, I love, we'd be like, yeah. Yeah, it sets the tempo. Kid Rock. You discovered Kid Rock. Cocky. Yeah. Oh. I got that from the Robies though. Big shout out to the Robies. No surprise it came from the Robies. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. <laughs> I was in Las Vegas with Chris Robies. Like, this is our song. I was like, this is my song now, too. <laughs> um, all right. You ready for the next part? Yes, sir. Chad, who is your beef of the week? Um, <clears throat> my beef of the week is with Twitter. Not related to Elon Musk in any way. I don't care about any of that. But just Twitter in general. I had to take it off my phone. I don't tweet. Um, I, like I don't tweet at all, but I would just pull it up out of boredom. It's so, it's like, it's the most toxic app. It is, I think it's by far the most toxic social media app because they would recommend, you know, I'd try to follow, you know, just like, you know, Bill Simmons or something, you know, but they recommend people and they recommend like the most radical thinking people on both sides and stuff. So you're just like, you're hit with all these like, crazy ass political opinions and you're like oh my god dude like it just make it just exposes you to the most toxic part of the internet right away without your permission and i was like i, I literally looked at it today i was i was like i just pulled it up and it was just like some i don't even know and, and i was just you know someone just just people are just fighting all the time and i was like this is horrible why am i even entertaining this so i just deleted that shit smart good call twitter fuck you all right, my beef, and Chad, you can you've you've had this beef before, but this is a different facet of the same beef. Hey, due to hit me with it. butt dart dudes, due to ride their bikes on the yes. road. But here's the thing: when those dudes are now off their bike and ordering coffee as a group in front of you, dude, <laughs> all of them have their clicky <laughs> shoes, and all of them are dripping sweat down the back, and they're all. <gasps> breathing all fucking loud and shit and clicking their shoes and getting and getting their drinks and it's all at one time and if you get stuck behind that dude that's a disaster and i haven't had my coffee yet and i need to drink up my personality i need that and i discovered this nice little coffee shop little la colombre over there in Frogtown. town oh, you got a new spot yeah i take sunny over there it's legit and so i got him and that's big for you oh huge and but it's right along the path along the fucking like la river or whatever so you get a lot of those butt dark bros and they all go in there and it's all like 45 year old dudes who like this is their exercise and they're very much what bothers me about it is the world is turned off to them they're fucking that's their zone you know what i mean and it just and maybe just because they're sweating and breathing loud and i've just woken up and haven't had my coffee so but not only these guys on the road they're also ordering in the coffee shop dude they're just in the way these dudes are in the way dude <laughs> get in a spin class bro get a fucking peloton dude and you watch a dj any chance to give it to those dudes, I'm all for it. Dude, exactly, bro. Dude, also, I'm like, you're ordering a croissant, dude. You're negating your exercise. Dude, I will stand firmly. Cyclists and Liver King haters, fucking get at me. Dude, I can, I can tag that too because I helped out your cause with your beef. Both y'all's beef. My brother picked me up from the airport yesterday. It's going to be part of my next thing too, but I, was, I hopped in the driver's seat because it was my whip. And then I missed the turn onto Sepulveda South, but you can still kind of finagle it on the straight lane oh, that yeah. goes there it forks but you can make that fork cop pulls up right past me he sees me kind of going for it i back up i'm like yo chris you think that cop can double back to me and drill me for this my brother's like no shot take a very slow right i think i was checking my phone or something i was changing songs my brother just goes stop biker stop my car Schwack, dude no you nailed that one he hit us <laughs> but i gave him oh you like break no check choice him. yeah <laughs> And then oh, dude. he hits the car. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. How gnarly is this going to be? He was a fucking, he was up quick. He was a soldier, man. He yeah. got back on. I think he waved to me like it was his fault. 
He just kept going. <laughs> I did. No, no, it was more like, what the fuck, dude? Oh, yeah, the hand was like, turned. like, it, was it, was a, it wasn't like, oh, God, yeah, it was the supinated. You know, hand, uh, yeah, right. I hope you get to where you're going <laughs> safely. It was like, what the fuck? Right, it wasn't as friendly as I might remember. But... <laughs> oh, did he fall down? No. He, so he he like, it was an illegal right, and he was coming on the right, and then he stopped, and the guy tried to make it. Try to go left to go around uh, around the car, and he just kind of ran into the trunk, and so it just kind of knocked him over. So mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't too bad. He wasn't injured. No, he was fine. He was, and then he really did pop up like immediately. And it was just kind of like a dude, what the f you know. And then then we went home. Yeah, and, then we and went uh, home. I uh, I hadn't had my vape in five hours because they took it from me right before I got on the plane. I ripped it. <laughs> it's in the the, like, the walk thing right before I got on the plane. So it's in the the flight attendant she goes, dude, you can't do that. Give me that thing. I was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. And, <laughs> and then so right after the bike Crazy, hits me, bro. I'm like, sorry about that, Chris. I'm like, hey, is there a vape in here? My brother's like, yeah, there's one right here. I was I'm like, busy, bro. all right, chill, 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 chill. <laughs> uh, uh, so one of those guys hit you, dude. Yeah. That's what I'm taking from that story. He initiated Fucking contact. Dork. He's an asshole. <laughs> We're good. Love that. Chris, who's your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is my wife's trash right ankle. Oh. Um, she always fucks it up. It's it's just a it's a shit ankle. And we got a wedding this weekend, so I really need. She just tripped on some pavement. That's how she broke her foot a little bit over a year ago. Uh, heal up. Quit being such a douche, because we need that ankle to dance. So. Quit fucking with my wife's shit and just be stronger. Hey man, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Will, if she's not up to it, will you at any point give her a little bit of a lap dance flavor at the wedding? Maybe some finger points from the dance floor. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to it. I do think yeah. she'll be ready to rock. I yeah. Let's go. That's beautiful. If that was like in the up montage, that'd be part of it. Hundred percent. And then it yeah. would end with you like dancing for her, but she's like suffering from incontinence and old and stuff like that. That's beautiful. That'd be so nice. It's a great scene. We'll never stop dancing together. That's nice. My beef of the week is, uh, I'm going to tough guy voice for this because I'm fucking pissed. And this is some fucking tragic shit that I'm fucking sick of, dude. I'm on the fucking airplane. It's an old fucking Delta plane. The fucking TV monitor is ancient. It's not responding to my finger touches. It's fine. I'm fucking persistent. I picked the movie The Replacements, Keanu Reeves, Gene Hackman. I'm ready to fucking cruise. <laughs> but here's the fucking problem. Dude, the fucking volume mix on this movie was the worst I've ever experienced. <laughs> and I've seen this before on fucking airplanes, dude. The dialogue, too quiet. The music, way too fucking loud. So I'm vacillating with the fucking monitor that's not responsive to fucking not hearing dialogue to having to take out one of the fucking earphones because the fucking police song is blaring, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Delta, figure it out. Who you got on the sound mix? Fucking Slipknot? Sucks. Still a nice flight, but sucks. Chad, who's your baby of the week? <laughs> uh, my baby of the week is uh, Grand Rapids and Royal Oak. Good call, dude. dude or, and also Tempe. Dude, can't Bro, forget Tempe. Tempe. Sorry, Tempe. I love you guys. I only forgot because you were at the start of the trip, but I fucking love the desert. I love Tempe. It's a great audience. I love Grand Rapids. I lo Dude, both places. I love the desert. Yeah. I love the rocks of Arizona. It just puts me in the happy place. I, I just I went for a walk when I got there. I was, I was like, I'm in the desert. I'm loving it. Let's do this. And then Michigan. Never been to Michigan. The Mitten State. What up, dude? Very like The people there are so sweet. And uh, so, like, proud of their state, which is very kind of, in, you know, very endearing. And just great audiences at all three shows. So, um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. I, I like touring a lot. I didn't think I'd like leaving California that much. But it's fucking, it's awesome. I'm sick when, we, when you're with your boys, dude. It's Grady, fun. shout out to Grady, dude. Yeah, great guy, Grady. great set, Grady, good yeah. stuff. Andrew Rafi. Great guy. Oh, yeah. Helped me a ton. Yeah, that was fun. That was so fun, being yeah. on the road and... Getting to check out different places. And Michigan is beautiful. It's it is. pretty. Yeah. Like the forest and stuff like that. It's really nice. Strides. Dude, my baby of the week has got to be my freaking dank ass fiance, dude. Um, because she reminded me, she's like, it's been a while since we've been on one of our breakfast dates, dude. 
nice date to go on to is a breakfast date. And we went to our little spot. We like to go to Beachwood. We sipped our coffee. And we made one of the most fire moves. This was her call, especially today. Usually we get two runyons when we're there, which is like big scramble of eggs, side of like hash browns, plus a piece of toast. And then we obviously split something sweet like a pancake. She goes, let's just get one fucking runyon. And neither of us shit our pants after breakfast because you know you shit your pants after breakfast when you go out. And is that true? This was great. Oh yeah, you're not you wait, you're not shitting your pants after a big breakfast? I might be. You're not shitting your pants after I, brunch? I take big shit. And you brunch? But I I never I never think about the food that made me shit. I think OPH definitely made us all drop deuces. Let me tell you, I clogged a, par, a toilet or two back at the par household. <laughs> OPH puts the calorie count now on their menu. Mistake. Huge mistake. <laughs> Huge, everything's a thousand plus. Yeah. Yeah, it's we're going crazy. to breakfast. There's syrup and butter and everything. I had like a 4,000 calorie breakfast. I was like, I don't want to know. Yeah, bro, I, I, had, we, I split that entree and then had a one pancake, but a big ass pancake. I haven't eaten them since then. That was at, we did a late breakfast. That was at like 9, 30, 10. Fire call by the lady there. Huge call. So just making a beast mode call of strengthening a relationship, talking stuff out over a nice cup of coffee, and then just really dialing it in for my tum tum. So Chris, you should have week. Uh, mine is my wife. Uh, she's been cooking up a storm lately. She also made ice cream. Whoa. Shout out to Caleb who got us the uh, ice cream maker off our registry. Thanks, dog. We she finally uh, christened the thing. How do you do that, dude? I don't know. She did, <laughs> <laughs> but Sounds she made. Awesome. It's like a. It's got like a. A tube in it that has water, and that's what freezes. Right, and it spins, and then you just put a another piece in, and when you pour the mixture in, it just starts rotating and just runs through like a couple of. Uh, oh, that sounds awesome. And then it's just you just see it start forming and like turning into like going from like a liquid to ice cream. Oh, I love that. And she yeah she made a strawberry swirl like French vanilla strawberry swirl. Ooh. That was for but most importantly, she's been taking and posting some really fire pics of me on her Instagram, <laughs> and I'm getting messages from the boys being like, "Oh yeah. my god, he looks so cute." One of them was me like taking a nap outside, and I looked amazing. And I just uh, thanks for taking good photos of me and then putting them places where the boys can see them because I've been getting some great reviews and it makes me feel good. So thanks, but bad. That's rad. Nice. And it is true. Like there's one of you on the couch just chilling and we're like, dude, I want to be Little Spoon right now with Chris. Bad. Thank you. <laughs> dude, my babe of the week is all the people I interacted with yesterday. Wake up in the morning in Royal Oak, get into an Uber. The driver's a beast. He's playing the weekend. We dish on that. Then we start talking gambling because I got a few casinos out there. Because I mentioned that you were saying we got to go across the border. Yeah, Windsor, Canada. Canada. I guess that's been like for like if you're under 21. Yeah, the drinking age is 19. So it's that's when I went. And I got him fired up on gambling, which was kind of a double-edged sword. I, I kept trying to pivot off of it. But hey, the dude was <laughs> enthused. Um, yeah. Then I get to the airport, get through security, kicking it at a little restaurant. Want to get two hot dogs in me before I get on the plane. I ordered it with, I thought, Chili's. It comes out with chili on it. Now, airport chili is not my favorite mm. delicacy. No, 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 no. I see the two hot dogs. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what's up? I'm like, I thought it was chilies. And then she's like, you know what, sweetie? I'll just switch that out real quick. Boom, dude. No extra charge. Amazing. Like, Let's go. Hooked her up on the backside with the tip. Get onto the plane. Lose my vape. Flight attendant's a beast. He had to call me out. Go to sit in 23E, which is like a middle seat. But I look at 6A. Just a little, f or no, 6B, no, yeah, 6A, just a little fire aisle seat that's available. Sit down there next to a lady, and I got to get tough guy for this because it's a little bit personal, but I don't, I wasn't supposed to be sitting there. And I don't think anyone was supposed to be sitting there because she was a bigger lady. And I think she got two seats for herself. Mm. But then this fucking dude just takes the seat. I'm the dude thinking that's a better spot for me. She didn't say nothing about it. She was sweet. We ended up having good rapport. We chatted back and forth, had little jokes about me trying to throw away her wine to the flight attendant when they came through. At the end of the trip, she said, have a good trip. I say, you too. Get out. My broski's there to pick me up. What a fucking beast, dude. Airport trips in LA, 
the biggest sacrifice you can make for another human being. Yeah. It's big time, dude. Tank's on full. You filled the tank. I almost kill a biker. You weren't that hard on me about it. <laughs> Keep driving. <laughs> I get home. I'm tired. I rest. Then I, uh, I talk to Chad. Chad's being a beast, setting up stuff for our future, dialed in on a Monday, just wrecking the logistics, everything in place, firing on all cylinders. Then I do an SAA meeting. Very f- cool. Very meaningful. Guys helping guys get better and not do stuff that's not good for them. Go to an open mic. This dude, Rio, goes up. Old guy. He's got a bunch of props. Whoa, we're in trouble. He's wearing a cape. He's half magician, half comedian. Yeah. That never goes well. He's filming a set. All of his props are dicks. He pulls out a huge prosthetic cock. He squeezes it and simulated semen comes out and shoots into his mouth. Did not expect to see that on a Monday evening. <laughs> lot to process. Lot to think about. Guy was sweet as hell. Had 600 bucks of Botox in his face. He told me how much it cost. Oh, um, super fun. Come home. No, go to CVS, lines long, almost threw me off, but I powered through, got my prescription. Joe calls me, total surprise, edit the Patreon episode. Then I hop on Call of Duty, wanting to play. Instead, I just get, I was tired. I didn't really want to play. I just sit back, listen to four of my homies talk, get two dubs. Brooks being an absolute killer from what I could gather. Oh, yeah. Greg, Brooks was so on fire. Greg goes, hey, dude, I clipped that for you. Yeah. Nice. And then I had some good sleep. Really good sleep. Went to bed listening to that We Own the Night, We Own the City show, which is pretty good. Not as good as Wire, but it's solid. John Berthnall being an animal. I'll sign up for that. Just a fire fucking day, dude. Let's Hell go. yeah. That's awesome. Let's go. All right. Chad, who's your legend of the week? Uh, my leg- legend of the week, you, JT, you mentioned this on an earlier podcast, um, but uh, the Shane, and, Shane Gillis and Louis C.K. podcast about presidents. It's incredible. I started listening. I've listened. It's four podcasts. I've listened to it three times, all of them. I love it. It got me fired. Like I was just like, I don't know. I. Uh, it's just very, the way they talk about each president, and you were making this point about how, or no, you were making the point about the way people teach history. It's like about like dates and stuff. They're like, nineteen forty two, blah blah blah. It's like the Louisiana Purchase, and it's such a boring way to teach history history but when people are like talking about it and talking about the people and like how they were and how they behaved and all that kind of stuff it's so much more it just sucks you in people who are passionate about history you're like fuck yeah dude so learning about all the presents like your podcast history is dank preach my dog people who are po- passionate about history it's like it to me it's just you, you're just locked in and it's the best so it's it, it's a those podcasts and the history is dank podcast for just uh legend you know dropping the history knowledge those are the those are my favorite podcasts so it is fun it's yeah. infotainment i love that type of shit yeah it was it was amazing we listened to it on our drive from chicago to grand rapids yeah and like every 10 minutes i was like that's the smartest thing i've ever heard and like yeah louis yeah. historical his knowledge his Louis, yeah he knows about every president and yeah. like you know he's a genius and aaron you mentioned when i mentioned that that he's not a genius at not jacking off in front of chicks i see that to you but he is a I mean, the horsepower that guy has in his brain yeah. is insane. And then when he gets to the modern presidents, he contextualizes it all in a way that I don't know how many individuals could do that. It's totally. insane. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait. I'm I got through the second. It's good. Oh, yeah, I told you, you told me about it uh, yesterday. I downloaded him. I forgot. Yeah. It, it was refreshing, too, because he, he, he talks about them as people, like how their character and stuff, not their politics per se. Smart which, framing. Yeah, which is yeah. like, you know, he talks about Obama and George W. Bush. He just talks about like like George like George W. Bush like really believed in free speech and could take a joke and that's what he respected about him and stuff. And like stuff like that. Instead of like, oh I don't you know. But so then, yeah. I like that perspective. Well that's also interesting because then if you do want to talk about like things that they did, yeah, then it's like you can try and guess what their motivation was. Because right. you're probably not gonna know, but at least you have an inkling of like who the person is and it's like maybe they were doing that because they thought this or like what yeah. was actually driving them to do the things that they did as yeah. opposed to like they did this on this date yeah which is just boring totally and and uh uh well i lost what i was gonna say and uh it's funny he's talking about he's talking about how like in america we have nerds and like cowboys the nerds get shit done or like the nerds like create shit the cowboys like get shit done yeah and so like a lot of presidents were like one-term nerds like john quincy adams you know it's like they're they're like 
smart and capable, but they got an offense. Everyone's like, you're a fucking nerd. Like, get out of here. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. Van Buren was a huge nerd. And yeah. FDR was like a secret like cowboy, right? Yeah, he he would like um uh he would kind of clown on Churchill, which like Churchill really wanted to be buddies with him because Americans were like considered way cooler, I guess. And uh so he's Hell like, yeah. Hey yeah, Frederick, I think we're really getting along. I like the connection. He's like, relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, shit like that. It's just fun. Smart move. It's great. Yeah. So yeah, history's dank. Baby, thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate that, my dog. Just trying to make it happen. Got a great episode coming out with our boy Grady Eldridge, who is a honorable mention for Legend of the Week. The dude brings it, dude, in the yeah. desert. Guy's a beast. Um, but my Legend of the Week might have to be Old Town Scottsdale. Yeah. This is Cabo. I've been talking about I We roll up there. First of all, I was JT calling out. He's correct. And honestly, that one, on, there was a nice guy at the show. And I lost anything. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. <laughs> Anyway, some guy goes at the show because Gigi's like, hey, bro, we're going to cruise to Scottsdale. Like, we're in Tempe. I don't realize how close all these things are. I'm like, what? Like, let's go to Mill Street. I go, how far is it? And like, there was this dude watching. And afterwards, he goes, dude, I got to see you do what JT calls you out for. You were being a bitch about that. He goes, you were being a bitch. We flew out to Tempe together. And the whole flight out, unprompted, you're going, bro, I'm partying tonight. No excuses. Yeah, you're, yeah. Like, you're like, dude, no excuses. I'm raging. The minute we go to party, Strider's like, it's too far, dude. I was like, no! It no. was far, dude. And Mill Street's right there. Mill's sick, dude. But, but get, what did you see when you got to Scottsdale? I get to Scottsdale. And they have, I haven't seen this since Club Mandala when I was in Cabo Harbor, whatever that fucking little area is called down there. Outdoor, completely exposed partying, dude. Every place has a fog machine. Coffee shops have fog machines. <laughs> fucking taco stands have fog. The fucking, there's just fog everywhere for no reason. There was a dentistry place, just fog. Yeah, just, just the dentistry had DJ music happening. Techno was being played there. It was unbelievable, dude. Uh, everyone's raging. Um, we, we couldn't even get to that spot because it was too gnarly, but we go to this adjacent bar and it was fun, dude. The dance floor's happening. It's like, I like places that have like the hangar style, like garage doors that open. So you can like go in and outside. It's flowing. So that was sick as hell. It wasn't too busy. JT was patrolling the dance floor, holding it down nice. I ripped a few shots of JMO. I did get sinusitis from partying. I wasn't doing any frat powder. <laughs> Scouts honor, no white lightning, not doing any of that type of stuff. I don't like cocaine. I just like the way it smells, but just fucking not <laughs> indulging. Uh, but yeah, dude, ripped a few shots. Maybe it was the desert heat, but got after. And I did even call it an earlier night. You boys stayed out. True night owls. Um, I crushed in and out on the way home. I was hammered enough where some dude was driving by. I had an Uber ordered and he's just going, I'll give people a ride. And he looked like a trustworthy dude. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> got in his car. And he just looked like he was like a Uber. Like he had an Uber sign, but just wanted to get cash. I was like, I got cash. Let's go. And uh, I was like, let's go to In-N-Out the whole time, just telling me what strip club to go to. And I was like, bro, I'm not going to go to strip club. I don't want to go to strip club. He's like, but this one's the best. Just so you know. <laughs> Do you think he kind of wanted to go to oh, strip club? Probably for sure. He's like, we can go in. I'll introduce you. He's like, 10 bucks cover. All good. Best girls. I'm like, dude, I just want In-N-Out, bro. Different vibes right now. And uh, he dropped me off there and then it was great. So fuck yeah. That was crazy. When we pulled up to Scottsdale, I was like, this is the most insane partying I've ever seen. Yeah. It was like on a whole new scale. It was. It was Cabo. You yeah. didn't feel. You were like, I can't believe they get after it this hard. And that was a Thursday night too. That wasn't even exactly. like. That wasn't even peak. It was crazy. Sick. Party Fuck scenes. Yeah. Dude. Party scenes. Oh, it's me. What was my? Oh. My legend is a movie. Uh, the worst person in the world. Good movie. Which was just. It was lovely. It's just like. Uh, Dramedy following a woman just going through different relationships and it just kind of it's told in chapters, but it just moves. She's messy, she's cool. Uh it's just so it's just so well done. I loved it. It just allowed for I mean, it's just a great movie. It was nominated for an Oscar. I hadn't I didn't seen it until this weekend and it just kicked ass. I love it. It's a great movie. So humane, so much empathy. And like you said, the, the the way it you think it's going to go fast and then it goes slow. Like you can't predict where it's going to go and at what pace. These small surprises all the time. Oh, and it's got full frontal male nudity. Which oh, like, let's go. Oh, there we go. 
dude's not circumcised and he's just letting it all hang out. And I was like, this movie's right. I want to call that the par test, dude, for movies, whether it's got full frontal male nudity. Oh, nice. Because I think yeah. I've never seen it always helps. In my opinion. That's true. And I knew you would agree. 40 year old, or no, 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 uh, role model. No. Uh, um, Walker Walk getting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. All, every scene in Game of Thrones when I see a penis on fire. Yeah. Wanderlust. Yeah. A lot of dicks. Eastern in that Promises. One. Ooh, Bro, the great fight dick scene. scene. Almost rescued that Chris Pine, Robert the Bruce movie. That was kind of a. But they don't even like, fast. it's like, it's like so fast that it's like. Also, the series Normal People, you see a little bit of the penis. Connell's penis, and it's a good penis. Kevin Bacon's dick in Wild Things. Yeah. Kevin Bacon's dick in Hollow Man when he's getting yeah. transformed and they show you. Oh, the yeah, right. Cock. That was really exciting. Chernobyl, nice detail. Chernobyl is the toughest dick. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chernobyl, good dicks. That one's liners. great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A movie that hurt the, um, what's the, is it Ridley Scott, the uh, Prometheus? The fact that you don't see those jacked beings' penises, I think. Yeah, hurt, it's felt. tough because they're so mm -hmm. huge. Just let me. I'd like to see. Silverback, but made by humans. Um, <laughs> um, my my legend of the week is a uh, it's myself because yesterday me and my brother were driving and I just go, dude, how old do you think Aaron Sorkin is? Or I go, no, I said I, me and my brother are driving and I say, hey, dude, what year do you think Aaron Sorkin was born? I never looked this up. Start doing the math in my head. I'm like, all right, I think A Few Good Men came out in 92. How old would a guy who wrote that play first that was on Broadway for a couple years be when that movie came out? I go, he was born in 1961. My brother looks it up. 61 on the dot, dude. Amazing. It was amazing. That's Man. impressive. I got so fired up. My brother said, you're too fired up now. And I yeah. said, I, the last thing I said to him before I dropped him off, I said, tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't sure I could rely on you to do that. So I'm just doing that. <laughs> yeah, I actually, <laughs> amazing. I guess the year yeah. that Sarkin was born. Uh, he was just so. Like, but you I, did wait for him to do his legend first because he could have done it in that moment. So right. that was good. You waited. Yeah, I had a backup. You didn't jump the gun. It was good. You picked the year. Yeah, which is crazy. Whoa. Interesting. Yeah, he's got a birthday coming up. A couple more weeks, yeah. Uh, Chad, what's your quote of the week? My quote of the week comes from uh, the cream master himself, Aaron Brungart. Oh. On the text thread the other day. Yesterday, he came in with a fire text, fire quote. You did? Yeah, I got to read. I, I was on my phone as much. About the animal? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. She's a civilian, so you do not salute her. Call sign Dode. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to this song on the way over here. Oh, fuck, I think the band's, maybe his name's Choir. Maybe the song's called Severance. Might be off or flip-flopping those or something in that realm. But it was a great line. No, maybe the song's called Chapstick. And um, <clears throat> the band might be called Severance. But anyway, there's a line in it that says, I don't want your leather jacket. I just want to taste your chapstick. Ooh, nice. I like that. I yeah, like give that. me smooches. Exactly. Chris? Uh, mine is uh, a buddy and his daughter is six came over last night and we were hanging out and she has a broken arm and she was in a sling and her dad was frustrated because he it kept getting messed up and he's like, oh, I just feel like all I'm doing is taking this off and putting it on and taking it off and putting it on. And then the six-year-old goes, isn't that just life, daddy? Whoa. Pretty poignant. Fucking A, dude. That's a crow. My daughter just takes some spray of toys, <laughs> dumps them on the ground. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Fucking A. Uh, my quote of the week is, I was going to do one from this book, but they're all too long. And I'm not even enjoying the book that much. Mine is from uh, Everybody Wants Some, Taylor Hecklin's character. Tyler Hecklin's character is a badass. And he makes a bet and he's acting all all hot shit and he really owns it. And then he goes, he's like, you like that bet? He's like, I love that bet. He's like, I mean, it's just the best day of my life until tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude, he's the man in that movie. Good attitude. Good attitude. Chad, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? Um, nice pick, bro. Nice. Mm. 
Mine's going to have to just be... Zoe Deutsch. <laughs> I just Dialogue. thought of Zoe Deutsch because she's in that movie. That makes me want to party. Zoe Deutsch. Deutsch. <laughs> There's like DJ's remix songs Tetro's like that. girlfriend too. Really? That's Tetro's girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Dude, Tetro's the man, dude. Zoe Deutsch is awesome. Great actress. Hey, you got excited. But Zoe Deutsch. Nice. <laughs> Chris, what's your phrase? Uh, let me hear you scream. Always good. Let's go, dude. Can't go wrong. Mine is, uh, I ran into this dude I used to work with today who I'm pretty sure LA has deformed and demented him into a full-blown madman. Just ran into him at the park, pulled his fucking huge-ass motorcycle right up to the basketball court, had speakers strapped to his jeans, no shirt on, he's fucking shredded now. He looked like, I don't know, straight from Burning Man. And uh, I asked him, uh, he's still engineering? He used to be an engineer. He goes, no, fuck engineering. So That's I, great. No, fuck engineering. <laughs> He was pissed. Wait, who was this guy? Who was this guy? Uh, I don't think you know him. It was back when I worked at a place oh, okay. like 10 years ago. He also said, before I knew it was him, he said, this basketball is slippery, just like that Pisces I was dating. <laughs> Dude, that's, oh man. And I clocked that before I knew it was him. And I was like, I'm going to remember that for sure. Who I guess he's doming. He said they're doing BDSM with each other. Oh, really? This is all when I went over and shot some shots with him. And he was really letting it rip. But he takes good care of her. He brought her gas the other day when she ran out of it. Nice. How's his jumper? Broke. Dude, he was throwing the most wild passes that just kept flying past. I, I said it was like playing basketball with Street Fighter. <laughs> he was just throwing the ball over the court. And I was like, what are you going to do after engineering? He's like, acting, music, maybe be a basketball player. And then I saw him hoop and I was like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Nice guy, though. Good guy. Shredded. Shredded is all get out. That's tight. Man. All right. All right, dudes. Good draft. Fuck yeah, Chris. Chris, congrats on the dub. Thanks, guys. Nice dub, Good bro. Stuff. Nice dub. How many dubs are you racking? You're racking dubs these days. No, it's just, I didn't gotten one since the first one. And you oh. weren't even here. Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. I think you just make good ass lists, maybe. Oh, I respect nice. your game. Thanks, Todd. Fucking hell. Let's go. All right. Sick. Later, Stokers. These guys are really nice.